Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dinner and a Game, where we talk about sex capades when you're not here. It's true. Yep. True story. We were talking about overly sarcastic productions. They are a wonderful YouTube channel. If you're not following them, please do. They're amazing. Oh, wait. I think I know what happened. Oh, no. No, no. Are we I have to have a cam on that I can't have on right now because Ivy is not going to be joining us this evening. She has yeah. family stuff. And we love her very much. We tell, we wish her all the best, and we will see her next time as sure we will. continue on without her. No wonder Em was cackling. <laughs> <laughs> Who said about me cackling? Uh, Celtic Wyvern King. I yeah. I mean, I Your laugh at bro. everything. <laughs> I laugh at everything. So <laughs> I don't know if he was talking about there. Never mind. So. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are you doing this evening? <laughs> it's been a day. It, it has it's been... been a day. Man, I my poor wife has been watching me just all day fucking long. And put it this way, it got so bad, she rolled into my office and she started giving me shoulder massages while I was wow. on calls. Oh, It was oh, man. bad. <laughs> And it was just, ah, man. Anyway, but now I'm here to cry. Yeah. That's what I'm here for, Emotional damage. Oh, no. I am here oh, no. to weep the tears of sorrow that can only be felt from the soul of someone who has lost. Oh, God. Oh, God. I got, oh, God. I got, I have so many people that I have to talk to tonight. Oh, God. <laughs> the checklist Ooh. is long. <laughs> Everyone is going to be facing dealing with some pretty harsh situations because in our last episode, we lost an NPC. We nearly lost a NPC who is part of someone's backstory and background. <laughs> and we, oh, and we lost an NPC who was part of someone's backstory and background. And we are now facing the reality of a friend who has possibly died. Another friend who is dealing with some horrific situations in their future. And a group of people who are now looking to find out what's next. And... Yeah. Uh, that's going to be our show tonight. Hope everyone's okay. Um, <laughs> get some ice cream. Get some cookies. I'm it's so a, glad you a, said that because I got two pints of Ben and Jerry's in my freezer right now. Get a, get a, a, get a family RPG. pet or a stuffy or plushy, and um, curl up on the couch because this is going to be a rough ride. I, I I hate to break it to you all, but this is a, it's a TTRPG. Being okay was never on the table. Nope. No. No. Never remember, on the no. Table. Critical role reference. I remember one time when someone was like, why can't... Someone replied in, uh, I think it was Marisha, uh, Marissa Ray's uh, uh, Twitter. It's like, why can't anyone ever play a character that just has a great family and a great life and is just adventuring for fun? And Marisha was like, we literally kill people. We nearly get p killed constantly. We're always in pain. We're always losing people. Why would any person who has a normal, adapted life want to do any of this? Um, Only the damaged. Uh, I could actually counterpoint that. For oh, one really? game. For one game. She had a wonderful childhood, wonderful upbringing. Uh, just wanted to explore the world. And that was my druid, Astro Hollyhock. And then shit went down because everybody wanted to talk and fight gods. And then she made a pact with a fathomless patron. And, and then shit just went down. And then the game never continued. Yeah, well, Yikes. that's what would have happened if that game would have continued. Yeah, but I, I like writing happy backstories. So, and give a list of people that's in it. And then traumatize me in game. I don't want pre-trauma. I want trauma in game. <laughs> you want, yes, I don't want pre-trauma. I want, I want during trauma and then post-trauma. Exactly. Give me, give, me, give me new trauma. Yes. Fighting, fighting gods is incredibly fun, and if you want some of that, you can tune in tomorrow 
for Kingdoms of Mist, where we will continue our ongoing saga of trying to see what's up with their gods. It's going to be interesting. Uh, but for tonight, we are playing our World of Darkness open world game. Uh, it's what they What also... do you mean there's trauma in the game called World of Darkness? What are you <laughs> talking about? Wait. <laughs> this is this game is actually called supposed to be called World of Angst. Um, <laughs> sorry. This, I thought it was trauma thought, in this economy. But I angst didn't was roll off the tongue up. right, so they changed it to darkness. That's all. Yeah. It was. <laughs> world of trauma. <laughs> world of trauma. <laughs> But uh, and uh, a open world game in the World of Darkness setting means that we basically are playing uh, archetypes from all the different sub games in World of Darkness, which includes uh, this is the 20th anniversary edition. So this includes Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, Changeling the Dreaming, Mage the Ascension, um, Bast from the, uh, in, in this particular case, someone from the Bastet book. <laughs> and uh, we have characters basically I think from all those books um, so let's go through and meet our players who are amazing amazing people I love them incredibly much because they let me traumatize them and they let me oh thank you so much Aww. for the gifted sub Milagros because they let me traumatize them and in turn sometimes they'll traumatize me because uh, they'll say things that make my NPCs cry um, so let's let's <laughs> let's start. Uh, let's go counterclockwise this time. Am <laughs> I love it when she goes so high that her noise reduction <laughs> cuts her out completely. It thinks that like, man, did someone just like you know let let some air out of a helium balloon or something? No, you know what's <laughs> funny. It reminds me of the uh, the um, I can't remember the the name of the fish people from the Legend of Zelda, but in Breath of the Wild, when you like any time you approach any of the ladies, like, huh? <laughs> The Zora. That's right. The, the Zora. Zora. Thank you, Jonathan. Yes, Zora. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. So, M, how are yes. you doing? As well as I can be today. <laughs> Was the anticipation too much to bear? I've been sitting, no, literally, it's been in my brain since last week. I'm like, oh, God, the aftermath is not going to be pretty at all. Yeah, because we literally wrapped up all those scenes of tragedy. Us leaving. And us with leaving. us le walking away from the basic battlefield. Yep. And so no one has had any time for anything to register yet. Nope. <laughs> so yeah. who are you playing who's going to be dealing with their trauma today? Hello, so I am Starshard Stories, or am I will be playing Lady Rosaline, our lovely She Noble from the Changeling the Dreaming. And if you want to follow M's content, everyone here uh, is some kind of content creator. Um, either they work here with Dinner in the Game or they create content on their own. And M, you can find M at the links that we just put up in the chat so she, you can follow her and make Everywhere. sure that you. Huh? I am everywhere. Yeah. She has, she is everywhere, but you can follow her on her TikTok to see some amazing cosplays, including her cosplay of Rosaline in her amazing outfit for the ball. And so yeah. do give her a follow. The content is excellent and we highly recommend Lady M. Uh, so, uh, Jonathan. I'm next? Yes. I'm actually using the uh, overlay as the Clock. No, no, I, I know. I just I can't stream two things at the same time and still be able to talk. <laughs> gotcha. So, Jonathan, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. So, I I think I'm the least traumatized by what happened. Yes. Yeah. Mark lives pretty much a carefree, nonchalant, bon vivant lifestyle, and uh, there's really Cats. it's really hard to traumatize him, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> And yet, at the same time, probably really easy to traumatize him. Like, just don't give him his kibble at the right time. He's going to get really bit bitchy. I mean, people or, keep stealing or... my chair. That's true. There is that instance of chair theft. Or uh, make a cannot, house have beef. We cannot them. overlook these slight Alleged chair theft. Alleged chair theft. We went over I mean, this. And you know what? I take it back. I was ago. actually pretty traumatized. Uh, Emrys insulted me at the end of the last session. He said I, I did, did go not. this time. As if I have never done good before. <sighs> I remember this is that. Be a nightmare. It cannot be denied. Yeah. That was a direct and straight up insult. I know. Well, I work so hard all the time to be the best, the best at everything. 
at everything. <laughs> I I even saved Lady Rosalind from Which hand smushing. She is really appreciative of it. I I saved Penny when she was going to get sacrificed on a stake, even though she's the mastermind behind that entire event happening. Okay, well, we don't know that Allegedly. Yet. Until Ray reveals that, like, 25 months from now. Who knows? <laughs> Penny, Penny might get smacked again tonight. Who knows? Which will be about oh, a no. week in in-game time. So, <laughs> Hey, yeah, trauma it, happens we... fast. Response, <laughs> uh, but, but surviving trauma takes a long time. It's true. <laughs> Jessica said, and who's a pretty kitty? <laughs> uh, Mark is the prettiest kitty. Yes, he seen. is the kitty, indeed. <laughs> so I, I am a werecat, so that's like a werewolf, but better because it's a cat. Um, specifically, a were lion. I, I have like feeling Santana's typing something. <laughs> what? I, I feel like you're typing something because I just said you know I was better than a werewolf. <laughs> oh, I didn't even hear that. I was, I was. Oh, okay. Let me say it one more time busy. louder. Oh no, uh, no, I was I, too busy knowing that it's not true, so it's fine. I'm a, I'm a bastet, which means I'm a were cat, which is like a were wolf, except for better because were cats are better than were wolves. I love we, that it goes right we, through the whole stick again, just so it can again. <laughs> yeah, real, real interesting opinion. Real interesting opinion there. <laughs> um, you, know, you know what? Hard theory, facts, if you will. We um, didn't murder the other were shifters for existing because we were jealous. <laughs> Okay. Okay. You, you, okay. You 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 got you got that one. Yeah, you got that one. Um, <laughs> but I was faster than you that one time when we raced directly. So I let you win. Still holding on. To- <laughs> no, no, no. I rolled that. I fucking won. I fucking won that shit. Oh yeah, no, no. You rolled better, but then I told everybody I let you win. <laughs> No, no. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're, we're besties. We're besties. <laughs> and speaking... we, we are in a weird way somehow. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of the besties, Milagros, how are you doing tonight? I am fan fucking tastic. Um, it is my last week of college. I have two finals tomorrow and Thursday, and then I'm done. I'm done with my bachelor's degree. Um, and then I graduate in uh, a week from Sunday. Um, so it's feeling a huge weight off of my chest that I don't have any like actual assignments to turn in anymore. That's been a huge relief. Um, I am immediately going into moving like to New York City, which is its own kind of stressful, but at least I'm gonna get my piece of paper. So, <laughs> really happy about that. Um, I will be playing uh, Pandora, our um, soon-to-be, possibly reinitiated Black Fury werewolf, um, and emotional support doggo, because um, she's like she's not gonna know how to actually like comfort Rose, but she can turn into a big fluffy dog, <laughs> so that helps, right? Um, That's one way to do it. Feeling hey, feeling no pretty bad it. about outright hating Finn very visibly the entire time. He was part of the group. Oh no! <laughs> I really hope that doesn't come back to bite Santana. Oh, I, to bite, uh, honestly, to bite yeah, like, you. I Pandora made like a thing, like the a thing with Tuck. That if anything happened to him, something bad was gonna happen. It's like I still don't know what the consequences of that are gonna be, but he's kind of dead. So I don't know. We'll, <laughs> Like I uh... just just let Rose handle talking to Tuck. Let yeah. Rose oh no, Rose not gonna <laughs> fucking talk to Tuck. Absolutely not. Um, but yeah, she's just I don't know. Just like it's weird. This is like her first real friend group that developed organically. Um, and so she's just she's very attached, but she's pretending that she's not attached. Um, Rose is big sis. Shut up. I... <laughs> She absolutely is. Um, and that was like her first, man, that was her first time getting to dress up and look what happened. So that was also kind of frustrating. In all honesty, though, you all went in aware that that was probably going to happen. Yes, but right. man, that's the true. suit got wrecked and that's what? <laughs> no, Pandora got to have her moment. So She did get to have her moment and she got to be used as a, whatever the fuck you call a thing where a you- gun somebody- platform. Mount. Yeah, she got yeah. to be one of those. So that yeah. was fun. For her for her 
ultimate crush. <laughs> <Here for it. laughs> Thank you. And Sphinx. Yes. <laughs> How are you doing? I I am I am I am I am I am looking forward to 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 having some emotions today because boy have I had some all day and I'm ready to forget about those emotions and come into these emotions. Well, I'm glad we're giving you a, an emotional outlet somewhere. Indeed. <laughs> and who are you playing this evening? I will be playing Emrys Grant. Uh, he is the group mage, uh, Order of Hermes, and also kind of the group dad. I yeah. think that is a very appropriate term. Alrighty. So He's trying to take do his best to take care of his daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Penny. Oh Penny. All right. Oh now so I'm, just... I'm scared. Disaster <laughs> oh, child. Yes. Disaster child. Disaster child. So, um for what was that? Lagos? Oh, nothing. I was. Just oh, I thought you saying. said something. I'm sorry. No, I got my rice pudding. I'm gonna eat this entire container. Okay, well you can nice. do that. That's, that's I just have no self control when it comes to specifically this rice pudding. I say that like I'm not gonna eat the whole thing, and then I blink and do. it's gone. Yeah. So. I do that with ice cream. Like it's just so good. The texture, the mouthfeel <laughs> is amazing. That's me with the mm -hmm. cheesecake. That's me with the oh, cheesecake. Oh, I'm only going to have one slice. I'm only going to have a slice. The whole thing's gone. <laughs> yeah, do not put cheesecake in front of me and leave me alone with it. Just don't. Right? Just, so, don't. everyone, it's a bad idea. I will go, if you guys want to order them cheesecake or anything else, um, we're going to start putting up their Amazon wish list in chat, and it's going to have the food on them. So Mine's <laughs> in my beacons. Mine's oh, in yes, my there beacons. You go. <laughs> So, uh, during the show, and we actually do a couple of different things to help promote the show, and one of those is some contests that we do both here and on our other social medias. I don't know what just happened. Who do what? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> the private chat is once again going up. Uh, so, uh, but what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to be telling you about two of the contests that we have going on, um, that one is here on Twitch and that is, we're going to be giving away this set of the D and D core set of books. This is the player's handbook, the monstrous manual, the DMG plus the GM screen comes in that lovely black slipcase. This is the special edition limited edition core set that is the foil printed covers, which means these covers are extra sparkly, extra shiny, and you will not have to write your name in Sharpie if you use these books at your local gaming store because they don't look like anyone else's unless they, of course, have the limited edition core set. Um, but... These are going to be given away when we hit 1,000 followers on Facebook, and we are at 735. I think we picked like 10 followers up last show. It was crazy. Um, so if you guys know anyone who uh, runs a stream and wants somewhere to raid uh, that would actually get their followers uh, entered in a contest, then let them know about us. And if you have any friends who don't watch the show yet, let them know about us and let them know about the contest we're doing. And so we will be giving this away when we hit 1,000 followers, which is what? Uh, 235 or 135? I can't do math. 235. Ta-da! Oh, not 235. 265 people away. So, we just need to get to that number and we will give this set away to one lucky viewer. And also, if you go to our link tree, which we're putting up in chat right now, because I forgot to type it before I started talking, because I talk too much and I make myself forget things, uh, you will see a link to our TikTok. And in our TikTok, we have a contest going right now. We are trying to hit 1,000 followers on TikTok as well. Now, on our TikToks, we are much closer than we are here. So on our TikToks, oops, that was loud. Sorry, I was just going there. I was just going to the TikTok, and it always starts playing automatically. And they have no way to make it not play automatically. Uh, but on TikTok, we're at 900 followers at this point. When we hit 1,000 followers, we're giving away this 3D printed tower. This is a tower that's approximately 9 inches wide, about 11 inches tall. Might be actually. Yeah, it's about 11. It's right there. So it's about 11 inches tall. Um, this has uh, four levels. It has a hatch that opens and closes in the roof. The front door opens and closes. It has stairwells inside each level, so you can set it up with the stairwells already in place. 
it also breaks down into components that are going to be small enough to pit, fit into a high top shoe box with ease um, we will be giving you this with all the accoutrements to it for the staircases all the clips to hold it together everything we're going to be sending this to one lucky winner when we hit 1,000 followers on the tiki talks so if you want to help us out there you can go over the TikTok and give us a follow again the links are in the link tree and finally during the show we also do one other contest that is on the break we are going to give away a mini now the reason i have all these minis up on screen right now when we give away a mini we will always give one mini away at least a show uh those mini the minis that we give away as part of the general giveaway are in the right two panels uh, the top panel is the monsters from the series that we're giving away minis from, and the bottom panel is the heroes for the from this mini series as well. Now, the other two minis, those are minis that we give away if certain conditions get met during the show. Um, first off, the bottom left monster is called the Hyena Dragon. It is from a different studio, 3D printed mini studio, but it fits in the theme. And the top model is called the Cathedral. Now, this is the main model from the series by Loot Studios uh, called The Cult of Hunger. And this is a, basically the scenario is a Noel Pact attacking a church and the, and the defenders trying to defend it. You can see on the what looks like to be the bottom level of the cathedral on the upper left there, you can see the minis inside the cathedral. These are 28 millimeter minis. So you can see there's about half a dozen or more minis in there and they have tons of room. This is a big mini. And Milagros already won the first one we gave away when we got hit a first hype train. So what we that have to do destiny. to get these, Yes. What we do to get these, do, get these given away is we have to get a hype train started and we will pick a winner and that winner will get the, the uh, hyena dragon and we have to complete a hype train and then we will get the cathedral given away as well. And that means that if we get everything done, we will end up giving three minis away from this group in one show. And uh, we do, we, so we're going to be doing this. Uh, we do this every week. The constants is every week. All you have to do is be watching the show at the break and be present to win. And that's it. Oh, and of course, enter the contest when we go on break. We put a word up in the chat box and you just type that word in. Uh, and you will be entered to win but we it doesn't work until we go <laughs> until we actually have the, the contest start because you have to see the notification in chat oh, oh boy thank you Celtic Orphan King it has begun it has oh begun. my god <laughs> heckin bamboozle got the gift I love that cuss name <laughs> oh, that one yay yay all right so Oh, 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 one other thing. I almost forgot because I took my little... I actually made a list, finally, of everything I need to go over. <laughs> so proud of you. I know. I'm doing a good boy. Um, also, uh, we have one other one way you can support the show, uh, other than what we've been talking about with the subscriptions and the bits and everything like that that are necessary to complete a, uh, a, a hype train. We also have a sponsorship through Geek Grind Coffee. Uh, Geek Grind Coffee is... Uh, oh, I just... I forgot I didn't mean to Geek Grand because I need to copy. Um, Geek Grand Coffee is an amazing company. They are uh, a company that produces some incredibly quality coffee blends. Uh, we are actually almost out, so we're getting ready to put a big order in. But uh, they make uh, basically fantasy themed coffee flavors. Uh, some of them are based off of Pathfinder. Uh, Starfinder, which are two popular TTRPGs. Some of them are based off of movies like Labyrinth. And uh, what are the movies that have they done? They do not have movies. They have comics. So heavy metal comics, and um, I think it's called the Shadow Man. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The Shadow oh, Man. Yeah. They have that one, and they have the heavy metal comics. But they did do the movies. They did the Labyrinth series. The, 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 yeah, this, the the Labyrinth that's series. The is still there. That's the only yeah, one. That's the only one. Yeah, that's the only one. Cool. And then they have some that are just fantasy themed. Uh, mm -hmm. like Dwarven Dawn, which is my favorite right now. Uh, my wife loves the uh, the winter one, which is, God, I can't remember what it's called, uh, but it's an ama amazingly good flavor. But anyway, if you use the link in chat to order your coffee from Geek Grand Coffee, we will get a small percentage of that um, as part of our 
for our, our little thing with them. And uh, the more you do that, the the more you know our percentages go up. And but you will also get an amazing coffee to enjoy as well. They also have incredible teas. Um, I know that their their labyrinth themed orange pico is freaking amazing. And uh, Sphinx likes the wine tea. The Beyond the Northern Wall. I'm drinking it drinking? right now. Yeah, that one's good too. Um, so yes, it's it great with amazing. honey, guys. Silent it's night. great that's with honey. Is. That's what the coffee flavor is. Silent night. All right. If you should is that the is that the is that the rogue blend of coffee? Silent night. No, no, that's Silent the Christmas night. blend. Silent... Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a horror movie back in the nineties where Santa Claus was killing everyone. I remember that movie. (laughs) And a couple of other announcements. Um, We, as a group, are going to Gen Con, uh, those of us who can make it. And so we're doing uh, some things at Gen Con, such as we're getting some interviews set up. uh, We're doing some cross-promotionals. And um, as part of that, you may see us showing up on other people's streams. And you may see some other people showing up on our streams. Um, and we're going to have probably a lot of announcements in the near future about that, including a new contest that's going to be coming up. So uh, just stay tuned. Uh, if you want to stay the most up to date, our Discord is the most active place um, other than our Facebook. Um, you can find our Discord here. Um, also, if you have anything else that you want to talk about with the cast, the cast is almost all in the Discord. And we have our P-Search channels in the Discord for every single one of our shows where stuff actually happens that's canon. So, you know, it, it, it's another place to find content for these amazing people and these amazing shows. But anyway, that is about all the jabbering I'm going to do for now. Too much, too much talking. So now I'm going to talk some more. Uh, <laughs> when we left off, you guys were in the throne room of the Fey Court. Mm-hmm. And you had just revealed the Fey King to be an imposter, had a horrific battle with that thing, the thing that was representing itself as the Fey King, uh, def- discovered that whatever it was, it was, for the most part, a puppet for a what's called a Nafandi mage. Uh, Nafandis are, fair the, for the most part, Nafandis are either possessed by or in league with otherworldly entities, usually called demons. Um, and because of that, the Nafandis can wield great power without the provocations and the weaknesses that mages have because they're protected by the demon side. Um, so, but the demon often exacts a heavy price for the power they give the Nefandi. Mm-hmm. Um, all that being said, the Nefandi summoned a bunch of lesser demons. There was a huge battle in this ballroom. Um, the players managed to pull out the V, but the W, I should say. But in the course of the fight, Penny was taken over by a creature uh, <clears throat> of immense magical power. And she was forced to stand aside and wait as the creature said it could only act when certain criteria had been met. Mm -hmm. That criteria happened to be one of the heroes sacrificing themselves to save the others. And that person happened to be Lady Rosaline's betrothed, Finn. After Lady Rosaline was grievously injured by a creature that the Nefandi summoned, Finn went up to her and took her wounds, which left Lady Rosaline fine, but Finn nearly crippled. At which point, Finn used one of his magical abilities to teleport onto the basically but the back of the neck of the giant creature that the Nefandi had summoned. And then, through a couple of different avenues of power, mainly being Penny, who was possessed by the ancient dragon of magic, and the Fey Queen, they enacted a spell using Finn as a channel focus 
that destroyed the Nafandi and opened a path for a, an entity known as the Wild Hunt, which the Fey Queen had previously summoned, and she assigned them to go after something, and they went through the portal that was opened and disappeared. After that, some things happened. Uh, there was some discussions, but they basically limped out of the ballroom um, and were headed home. Mm-hmm. If I remember who brought them was Tuck. Yep. Yeah. I, as, as before we get into the van, uh, I, was I would... Limo. <laughs> A limo, right. Uh, before we get to the limo, I would very much love to... I'm sorry, you see, like, you, know, you had something to do before that. I was uh, going to say, are you doing this before you even go down the stairs, or are you actually going to walk down the hundred stairs? I'm going to walk down the hundred stairs, because I don't want to do this in the, the, the fake court. Okay. Is anyone going to do anything else before you officially leave the fake court? So you guys are proceeding down the stairs. Penny's still pretty unsteady. So, you know, you're having to kind of... People are having to help her walk down. Yeah. Um, how are you, Rosaline? She's just walking down the stairs past everybody. Beelining right for Tuck. The limo is parked out front now. Yep. Is it still in its carriage form, or is it in limo form again? It's in its carriage form right now. And Tuck is watching you walk up. She just has that look. Tuck's face doesn't change, but his eyes go from the sparkling light blue to a very, very dark green. Tuck. Lady Rosaline. You'll be the first to know, but when we get home, I need all of the rest who are under Fen to be at the house. It will be done. Finn. fell but there is a chance to get him back as you when you say that his eyes flicker briefly back to the blue and his eyebrows go up a little bit and he says how the mortal body is dead but the face seeming is not <clears throat> and he kind of like has a curious look in his face and he, he nods. He's like, I don't fully understand it. but It's something my house knows. Me. Yeah. And Mab up there owes me a big favor. And he raises his eyebrows. He's like, some favors still come with cost. Be wary. I, know. I know. I have a feeling I already know what the cost of this one will be. <clears throat> Tuck holds the door open for you. Yeah. The other porters help you get into the carriage. Uh, what about the rest of you? Things, Finn, you're at the bottom of the stairs. Oh, sorry, Finn. <laughs> Emery, you're at the bottom <laughs> of the stairs. Why would you say that? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to help Penny to the carriage. So to the coachman one... because of the dress. Yeah. And once we help her in the carriage, I'm going to step away from the carriage. I'd like to bleed off my paradox. All right. So I don't um, want to. I don't want to go into to Rose's house with three paradox. I don't know what that's gonna do. All right. <clears throat> so I gotta remember how to. I haven't. Man, it's been a long time since I had anyone bleed. Actually, bleed paradox. We did it when uh, we at the zoo. At the zoo, yeah. But I can't remember what we did to do that, or what kind of role that was. It was forever ago. Yeah. I mean, I could probably. That was like four down. days ago. 
in game in game yeah <laughs> Was it before or after we found um, Eric? Uh, it was, it was right before we went to go look for Penny. Yeah, it Penny had right been kidnapped. After. Yep. Uh, it was also where I did the reading of my cards on the uh, hood of the car. Found it. Um, nice. Okay. So, um, from what I can see here, um, Ray had you roll with a difficulty of eight. Um, I don't know what kind of roll it was. Was it a Narite roll? Um, not that I, I don't think I wrote it down because I literally don't know how to spell that. So every time Ray has you roll that, I don't write it down because I don't know how to spell it. A R E T E. While we're figuring out how to bleed paradox, just hear this weird song. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I have actually, actually, I have a question. It has nothing to do with it. I put it in the chat, but nobody answered me. Um, does geek crime coffee come as like yes. like ground coffee? Yes. Um, yes. So you can make it in a percolator. Mm-hmm. Yep. Bet. It's and if you have it, they also have espresso level beans. So if you have an espresso Ooh. grinder, you they have espresso blends. Okay. And they have it unground too. Yep. Because we make everything in. They also have K cups. In a Greca at my house. Nice. Um. Just found out. I found out recently. It's called a percolator. I've always called it a gecko, and it was like I don't percolator. Know, it's a it's a metal thing, and you put the coffee in the bottom, and then it screams, and you open it, and the coffee's in there. It screams. <laughs> yeah, at least our sets. We've we've been using the same one for way too long. Yours is actually the s- tortured soul of an ancestor who's forced to make you coffee every day. No, literally, <laughs> it like it pops two at the bottom like the metal just like pops and it like jumps a little bit and then when it cools down it like goes back to <laughs> it's a very well loved <laughs> it's been a, it's it's seen some shit it's seen a lot of shit <laughs> Let's see. all right i flat my book up because i couldn't find it on the web because the web sometimes fails you yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm not hold on. Anything about it Let me book. look on the one website that I go to. Yeah, Ray said he can do this, but he will take two points of damage. So he spent a willpower. 333. My Man. notes. My notes have failed us. How could they? Okay, paradox. Hold on. Uh, gaining and losing. Um, a mage bleeds off one paradox point per week mm-hmm. since last point gain. It doesn't backlash right away. That is the more paradox game. Prime five can be used to ward against paradox as described in the spear. Certain wonders or familiars have a way to deal with paradox as well. Um, oh. Backlash. Five or less. Roll paradox to take the number of successes as bashing damage. The mage may also gain a trivial temporary paradox flaw. Uh, a willpower can be point... Okay, here we go. Uh, generally, as soon as the mage is accumulates points of paradox, the back, they backlash on the mage. A willpower point can be used to stave off this until after the current scene, but this, of course, can be very dam- dangerous. Sometimes, though, especially if the mage only has a few points, less than five, the paradox may linger instead of immediately backlashing. Uh... A mage player rolls accumulated paradox whenever it does black backlash. Uh, it does not uh, say how to get rid of it. Losing it is is once per week since last point gained. And that is if the paradox is gained before losing any, the clock is reset. Hmm. That must have been something that was they changed in twentieth. 
Yeah, I am looking. This is always a hard part when you're paying so many different systems. Yeah. <laughs> There's always okay, gonna be I... something that slips through the cracks and you're like, oh shit. Though right. I love the trivial flaws. These are barely noticeable or slightly inconvenient and last a short time. The mage's watch may run backwards due to time effects or his hair may stand on end due to, for due to forces, for instance. <laughs> At, Emery's hair is like what? How does he it's like it? shoulder it's like shoulder length dreads that he usually like either uh, keeps tied back or keep uh, like kind of in a top knot. I've got an interesting idea for one of those then. Oh boy. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Okay, uh, I tried to help cuz there's a no, website no. that I use so yeah, yeah, <laughs> that I, I would, no, I use the same site. Uh, Which I need to link y'all to that cuz that will help a lot. Yeah, it will. Okay, hold on. Do 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 Oh Jesus God. Spirits. I just read what happens if you botch with paradoxes. Yeah. Jesus Christ. You can destroy the world. Not really. Yeesh. Still pretty bad. <laughs> So let's go ahead and just do this. Uh, if you're going to bleed off the paradox, since I let you do it once, it's going to have to be canon. Okay. This paradox. Blah, 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 blah. What the hell? Huh? Jeez Louise. All of a sudden, I can find nothing but references to Paradox, but they're not what I need. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going through all the references to Paradox in the book, and it's like, nope, 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 nope. Paradox pool, less than a minute. Damn it. Uh, successes. Oh, wait, no. That's not what I wanted. Ah, here it is. Oh, they got cute notes. <laughs> So you're going to do a dump, which is bleeding off paradox. And do you have anything in prime? I have two in prime. Okay. So you're going to be using prime to and well, you're supposed to be using prime and um, the one that deals with time with the space spatial relations correspondence. Okay, I don't have any correspondence yeah. yet. But I think I let you do use just prime, and that's why you took damage. Probably. Because prime, okay. uh, because normally what it was is it was an arete roll. You had to have a certain level in prime, which is I think three, and a certain level in correspondence, which I think is two, to be able okay. to bleed off paradox, which is why you took two wounds. All right. Well, it's time to start putting points in correspondence then. <laughs> Um, so let's go ahead and do that. You're making a rete roll. The difficulty is an eight. Okay. I'm going to spend my last willpower to give myself a success. Difficulty is an eight. One, two, two. So two, two, uh, two successes with the die. And one from my last willpower. So that's a total of three. That's all three. That's what you need. So once again, you manage to bleed off the paradox. But once again, it does. It feels like it is ripping something away from your literal essence. Oh. And you to take two levels of damage. All right. As you shed off the paradox. Um, describe what happens when you shed off this paradox. Oh, no. Because you just shed this paradox off into the dreaming. Oh, we're still in the dreaming. You're Shit. in your dreaming. Yeah, you're not in like mid dreaming or the far dreaming. Okay. <laughs> you're in that twilight realm, which is the border between sleep and wakefulness. You're you're in the safe spot. I will kind of plant my staff into the ground, 
Uh, I take a deep breath as I kind of center and ground myself, and I literally push uh, the paradox out of me, through my staff, and into the earth. All right. Uh, so as you shove the paradox down into the earth, the ground around it, which is like a beautifully laid out and constructed like a gravel drive that's perfectly seamlessly done. There's paving stones along the edge of the gravel drive that go right up to the beginning of the uh, the 100, foot, 100 stairs. Um, on the other side of the paver stones, there's this meticulously, you know, weeded uh, or planted flower bed and yeah. this, this row of hedges behind that. You release the paradox. There is now tree stump, weeds, the flowers are gone, replaced by like a bunch of uh, ivy growing just rough shot all over the place. Um, the paving stones are gone, the gravel is gone, um, and around you you see a limousine parked on a dirt road. I will sigh and kind of mutter to myself, next time I'm bringing Rumi with me. And they in you and you also notice that standing at the basically standing on on either side of a rickety wooden staircase in front of what looks to be an old meth trailer are two guys <laughs> who are in suits. Uh one of them both of them are holding like these like beat up walking sticks and they kind of look at each other. And they look around, and he's like, dude, where the fuck are we? And the other one's like, I have no idea. Who the, what the fuck's going on? Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you guys? Oh, my God. I, I will kind of, put, oh, my God. No, no. Where are we? What? What just happened? What? Oh, no. What? By the way. So, Rosaline. Yeah. You feel the burning fire of banality ripple <laughs> out. You feel your seeming being torn from you. No, oh, no, 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 no. Are you unintended going... consequences? You can choose to spend three points of temporary glamour to maintain your seeming through I got this it. finality. I got it. Because I've been keeping total because brisket is fantastic. <laughs> and having Penny around is fantastic. So I can't do that. Again, why your I need to have my... Not tied directly into glamour. But... I'd... The I, I crown, technically have a glamour of one. I just never use it. I know. Your crown yeah, is now one of those Burger King crowns. <laughs> oh, baby. The, the scepter you found is now a wand from the Harry Potter world, a universal. <laughs> which, which wand? Uh, I don't know. Pick one. No, you pick one because I want to know how offended I'm about to be. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be what's what is it called? The one wand? I forgot what his name was. The elder, the elder wand. wand. The wand. Yeah. Oh, this is okay still. <laughs> and um, the, the necklace. well, the necklace. You, it's in your pocket, so you don't know. Well, the crown was in my pocket too. The crown's too big to go in a pocket. Well, no, it was like it's a, a metal coronet. It's big. No, you said it was a circlet. Oh, did I? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you that's did. in your pocket. All right. There you did. Um, okay. Well, Burger King. So, so what is the necklace? I'm gonna look in there. Uh, the necklace is one of those. Plastic... Please don't be paper clips. Please don't be paper. Clips. No, it's one of those plastic necklaces that has a little plastic clip and it's a bunch of hooks with flowers all through it, and you know it has a little big ring of flowers in the front. Oh, it's like but it would fit like a seven-year-old kid, so it it barely fits around your wrist. Ray, yeah. 
from what I do understand about the Fey world, once whatever did this is got time or something to pass, do things go back the way they were, or do you have to find a way to restore them? If it strips all the glamour out of something, then you have to restore glamour into it. Um, that can be done in a number of different ways, but one of those ways is to rest the items by a bale fire. Another way is to take those items and, you know, leave them in the pro the possession of a dreamer uh, as they're creating. Um, and another way is to have a changeling actually imbue them with their personal glamour, um, as if they were storing glamour in the items. I'm going to give the dirtiest look possible to Emrys. <laughs> He's like, all like a Burger King crown. <laughs> oh no, no, no! The door no, is going to fly open to the Burger car. King crown on, and then I'm going to pull out the little necklace and I'm going to put it on. You can't. And fit I'm going to hold your my neck. Harry Potter wand, huh? You can't fit the little necklace around your neck. It's around like for a little wrist, kid. Then <laughs> <laughs> around my wrist. Poor baby. So the and door just, flies open. I'm mad dogging Emrys the whole time I'm doing it. Well, the door wasn't closed yet. Oh no, Rose is just gonna get out of the car. Like, you still look like Rosaline. Take off her shoe. You take throw it at him. Shoe and chuck it. Yes. <laughs> Where? Right at Emery's. Probably me. <laughs> <laughs> Make me Ray? a Dex plus Malay roll for throwing a shoe at Emery's. Oh, perfect. Ray? Yeah. Now that I know that's okay, I'm <laughs> I know take that's my okay. shoe off. <laughs> and I'm going to throw it at Emrys too. <laughs> the same shoe. So if she took off her right shoe, it's my right shoe also. Yes, it was my right shoe. All right, what's the difficulty to chuck it? Emrys is just going to take it. Cause... Six. <laughs> <laughs> what are we rolling now? Dex plus what? Melee. 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 Oh. Oh, this is. A... <laughs> yes, you use a sword. So yeah, you have a decided advantage. I got two successes. Okay. It really doesn't do any damage. It's just want to make. No. I just want to know how well you place the shot. <laughs> yeah, she's also gonna yell. You could have just hurt me now with that bullshit. <laughs> Five successes. Yeah. So, <laughs> Rosaline's shoe just flies out, like bops Henry's in the shoulder and goes flying off. Uh, oh no! <laughs> you can choose where you want to put the shoe, Mark. Okay. Uh, as Rosalind's shoe like bops off of his shoulder, mm -hmm. I hit him so that it hits the exact same spot on the shoulder and then bounces into his ear, like right there at that point where it's going to make it ring. Oh, <laughs> what me. type of shoes were you wearing, Mark? Uh, I'm going to guess like boot looking things because this was a whole medieval outfit. Got it. All right. This is very heels. So, Emery's, <laughs> you get bopped with two shoes. One actually hits you twice. And it's got yep. a really hard heel that pops right into your ear, and now your left ear is ringing. And that's just I, like I'm, I'm still holding on to my staff and still fairly grounded, so I just I maybe rock just a little bit, and then I take a deep breath and I look up and I go, "I'm really sorry, but would you have rather me done this here, or at or at your home?" The house might kill you. No, the house is not a bully. As I pick up my shoe and start putting it back on. <laughs> In your head, um, Rosaline, you hear, I can't really kill anybody. She, she just smiles a little bit. No, but Rose is just making that threat. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt anyone. And I didn't mean Suppose to I could drop a couch ruin right? your things. <laughs> that kills but you? if I brought... Hmm? Oh, a bathtub full of water. I could drop a bathtub full of water. That's really heavy. Rosalie, you hear, you hear Rosalie snort a couple times. I could drop a fridge on him. Okay, I have a bathtub full of water and a fridge and a couch all on standby. Thank you, Rose. <laughs> you're you're going to fix last, it, right? The last thing I want to do is to bring Paradox into the home of someone from the Dreaming. That's not what that wouldn't be okay. 
Yeah, well, you, basically, you basically just bled reality out into fantasy land. Yep. Well, we need to hurry Didn't home. Did you notice on the drive back home? Like, I don't know, in the city where nobody would have cared? That might have caused some weirdness in the city as well. Um, the last time I did this, if you recall, I put hydrate. out quite a few street lamps. No, yeah. I don't want to hydrate. Absolutely oh, yes, not. when you did it next to my spiritual realm. Yeah. Now you live next to his spiritual realm. Well, we need to get back. I have, I don't know how many people I'm going to have to explain things to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's get home. All right. So you pile up into the limo. Uh, once again, you're driving through these windy roads in, in, that are deep in the in the forest. Um, it once again takes about 45 minutes to get back to the house. Um, as you are pulling up to the house, Rose. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. What would your idyllic, <clears throat> I guess, modern micro mansion be like? It would be kind of more like a cottage style. Like cottage, like very warm, cozy. So as you're pulling up to the driveway, you take that left-hand turn into, or sorry, yeah, left-hand turn into the driveway, and you're kind of pulling around the, the winding driveway. Instead of being kind of like the overgrown street side that it was before, that screened out, like, you know, you couldn't see the house from the street type thing. Now, at the base of the street, Along the ent along the road, there is a wrought iron fence that is completely overgrown with tons of different types of vines and ivy. The fence itself is like 10 feet high. Mm -hmm. So it screens out from the street the house. As you pull up into the drive, there is two red brick pillars with what looks to be actual gas lights on the top of them flickering. Yeah. Wow. Um, by the way, Dawn is getting ready to come up by now. Um, yeah. So, you know, Vera is kind of anxious to get in the house. She's actually nodding off. Um, as you get up, the two two gates just swing open without a sound. There's no creak of motors. There's no noise except for the slight clanging of the gates as they swing open. Um, the path driving up, it is a, a well-maintained gravel path. But on mm -hmm. either side of the path, instead of being like a lush lawn or a landscape or anything like that, there is just bushes that grow up tall on either side. Um, so you don't even get to see the house until you come around the last bend of the driveway and pull up to the house. This is a... It's not a cottage. It is a Tudor. You know what a Tudor style house is? Ooh. Yes. It looks like... I will say it looks like the house she grew up in right yeah. after... Yeah. for chrysalis yeah um so Comfort. the the house itself is almost the same size as the house that was there before so it's the same giant long house um but instead of being a single story home like oh no that one it was three story home it was three stories on one end and then it was a single story all the west way through yeah this is a link to link two-story home um it's got that steep pitched roof um, it's got the, uh, real wood tiled roof. So it's like, it's like the cedar plank roof. Um, it's got four chimneys, two in the front, two at the back. Um, there is a huge set of oaken doors that are around 11 feet tall at the entry. And the entry is a set of stairs. That's kind of like a rounded half round dais that comes out from the front. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a set of stairs going down, like four steps, uh, that lead up to the door. Um, the car comes up into just a huge circle of that red gravel. <clears throat> and the limo kind of pulls up around in the circle and pulls up and stops in front of the house. Um, you see that, that's the, off, that off the circle and going in front of the house, there is another drive that goes around to the back of the house, which is where the garage was in the previous house, was kind of around the side and the back of the house. Um there is a gentleman standing at the door. 
He is in a formal butler's uniform. <laughs> is it Alfred? Did Alfred show up? <laughs> Once again, she gets cut off. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, yeah, Alfred is standing. My loyal <laughs> boy. My loyal boy showed up. He always comes through. He comes walking down to the car. And he opens the door. And uh, he's he kind of like starts helping people out. Who's the first out? I feel like Vera should get inside first. Yeah, Vera. Yeah, yeah no, Vera Mike's inside. She kind of, and kind of, as Alfred sees her coming out, he says, uh, the stairs down to the basement are still in the same general area. So just take a left as you come in the door and go down the hallway. You'll find the door to the stairs. And she looks, Vera kind of looks back over her shoulder. And she looks at all of you, and she says, I'm sorry, I have to. Mm-hmm. Do what you need to do. It's okay. She kind of looks at you, Pandora, and she kind of smiles, and then she like just heads inside. No. All right, so, you guys, what are, who's going out, who's, who's, who's getting out of the car at the normal speed? <laughs> I'm gonna wait until yeah, I'm last to to help Penny out. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Rose. I don't want to like go into her house before her. Rose is gonna get out of the car, and he helps you out of the car. Thank you, Alfred. He says, um, "I am very sorry." Yeah. Um. He Can says, you do me a favor? I am also very sorry that there is a visitor. Who's here? If I understood correctly, your mother? Liam's wife's here. I'll go handle that right now. Alfred says, um, She's in the library, um, which is through the door and to the left towards the master suite. Yes. Two doors. Yeah. Um, we are possibly expecting others here later, possibly during the day. Um, I have been told that there is going to be a ceremony awake. There is a chalkboard in the kitchen on the fridge that writes things. Yes. It's the house. <laughs> Enchanted house. Understood. Yes. Um, some of Finn's people are going to be showing up. I have things to discuss with them. Very well. He says, I will talk to the house, I guess. Her name is um, Finn named her Rose. Oh. That makes sense, I guess. Hmm. Um, whatever Pandora, Emery's, Mark, or Penny needs, make sure they get it. Absolutely, miss. Although I feel kind of redundant in a house that already serves people. She just chuckles a little bit and then heads into the house and goes to the study. All right. As you're walking in, the rest of you are still piling out of the car. Alfred is waiting there to help people out. And he kind of he kind of leans in. He says, Mistress Penny, I understand you've had a very rough time. Would you like assistance to your room? And Penny, who is kind of like leaning, half leaning on you, Emery's, and half like kind of like, like leaning back in the seat, she kind of flutters, flutters her eyes open. And she looks at you and she says, I think... I do need some rest. Most certainly do. She kind of like takes Alfred's hand, he helps her out of the car, and she's like, other people help me get into this thing. I guess I'm going to have to find a way out of it myself. I mean, I can zip you down. I I don't and know if you want stops. me to... She literally stops. She reaches into that little vest thing. She takes a blade out of it. And it starts cutting through the hoop skirt around her waist. 
and she cuts, she pans the knife all the way around herself. It goes through it like butter. And then she just like rips the hoop metal material apart in front of her. And she basically just like cuts her way out of the dress. I, we, we, we could have figured something else out. She kind of looks at the dress and she is like, stupid kids fucking dreams. And she walks off. Lemma's face just falls. <laughs> and you can see that when she turned and walked off that she had tears streaming down her face. Uh, I go after her. <laughs> She's already like running upstairs. You gotta chase her up. Yeah. That leaves Pandora and Mark. All oh, those two are in the car together. Yep. You guys are kind of sitting there and there's a very awkward silence oh is it tuck in the driver's seat yep the the window between uh, the limo the back front of the limo back of the window comes down and tuck's like did you two idiots forget how to use a door Mm. no no we have a field trip you gotta take us to the park oh oh shit is that now yeah Wait, wait 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 is that now now i thought it was like hold on it's supposed well, to be next day. It's next was, day. No way, but like oh. what time of day? Because it's dawn. I feel like it was probably nighttime. I was gonna say, I feel like it was it was probably evening, not dawn for that. So You're no not f- gonna go to the park and figure out what it looks like before we go? Why would I do that? So that we can figure out where all of the good exits are, how you're not gonna get ambushed if something goes bad. We can, like, just enjoy the view of it, not be at the house. Also, why keep saying we? I, I was the one invited. Well, they invited the worst shifters. I'm a shifter. I don't know. They said some kind of mean stuff about you. Uh, they never said anything mean to me. What did they say to you? Well, they were t- um, they were talking what? about you, but they said that you had... Oh, yeah, I'm amazing. Of course they're going to talk about me. <laughs> it wasn't that. Um... It was... <laughs> You're ridiculous. Um, oh, uh, I think they're upset that Vera gave you her blood. Oh, yeah. Everybody wants it. All right. Um... So Tuck kind of like, okay, you guys can have this. You guys can have this argument on the way to the garage. And he like guns the, guns the limo a little bit to get the door to slam. And then begins driving the limo around the bend to the to the garage. He parks in the driveway, and he gets out of the limo, and he walks into the side door beside the garage. Walks to the side door beside the garage and looks in the back and says, "You two fuckers can sleep there if you want." And then he goes inside the house. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so are we going together, or do I have to find my own ride? Because Uber takes a little bit of pre-planning to do. Okay, I feel like it would just be easier if. Where if we're both going, then we might as well go together. They're, otherwise, it's kind of a waste. It, it it is like better on the environment, and I know that I, that's uh, like a really important thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. We'll we'll go together, but I think we have some time. I don't, I don't want to just ditch Rose right now. I feel like we should be around for at least a little while. She doesn't seem to like me much, but you I saved her saved life. Saved her so... life. He'll be okay with me, I guess. Like, I I just don't want to, like, you know, push that last nerve. I think saving her life had to mean something. I feel like it would be more rude to just leave her right now. Like, we're, we're her friends, right? This is, at this point, we're friends, right? All of us. I'm not quite sure where that line is. So she wants to see me, but I keep my mouth shut, right? I mean, maybe don't argue with the house. The house starts all the fights. Okay, all of them. Like, okay, but it's literally like named Rose. Like, no, so like, no, you're you're trying to start a logical line of argument with me that's going to make me look bad because the only way that one ends is when I say Finn was obsessed with her and that's why he named the house after her. And then I look back because he's dead. That? Why would you say? Don't just don't say it. <laughs> yeah, just the two of us. Look, I feel 
we're supposed to go in the evening. We can go a little bit early if you want to, I don't know, like drop a map of the whole thing, like whatever. But I don't want to just leave right away. Okay. But we need to build in a little bit of time to have crepes before we have the meeting too. Like sweet ones or like the like the ham ones? Whatever you want. I mean, it's like a stand. They'll make whatever. Oh, I mean, bring okay. your own ham if you think they're not going to have ham. We'll stop at a grocery <laughs> store. I don't care. <laughs> oh, I feel like I would piss them off so much. I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You like the house? Ask the house if it'll make you some ham. I, then we'll stop at the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> If I just bring like an entire, not even slice, just like an entire ham, just they can just put that in the middle of it. So you're planning the uh, uh to bring something to the mixer there. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get. Out. Oh, that's a good. That's a good point. Are we supposed to bring gifts? I don't know, so I think we should. Okay. <laughs> Like, Other than ask. saying they were jealous of me, what else did they say so I know I what mean, kind they, of gift to buy them? They didn't say they were jealous of you. They just said that, like, you had... <laughs> 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 um, they didn't say they were jealous of you, but they... Um, I don't know. They. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like I should, I don't know, bring, like, the Communist Manifesto or, like, the Anarchist Cookbook or something. <laughs> They want books? They seemed really not like the book reading type. No, but they did seem very much like the punk type, and I don't know how else to like we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We can ask the house for help. Uh, no, I'll just figure it out on my own. I'm not asking the house for help. Well, I am not going to go out and get something and then come back and then leave again. So if I need something, I'm going to ask the house. Well, if you want something, let me know, and I'll add it to the favor list so they'll drop it off at the house. The favor list? Yeah, it's this app you put on your phone, you tell them what you want, and they bring it to you. It's faster than Amazon. Oh. Like, somebody Maybe. else goes and does the shopping for you, and then they just bring it to you. It's so great. It's, so it's Instacart? Like, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, so it's actually like, another app. It's like DoorDash for everything. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, so they're punk and they're werewolves. And that's the only two things you can tell me about your friends. Well, I mean, other than I've the never... fact that they're secretly low key jealous over me. I mean, they've never and met Mira. them before. They're, I mean, they're Black Furious, but I've never met them before. I don't. Does that mean anything special or does it just mean that, like, they're called Black Furies? Like, oh, no, it's a, it's a tribe. It's a whole, like, it's a lineage. So it's like a family name. Sort of, yeah. It's like a, a clan? Is it something know, that they're like proud of? Or is it just like who they are? Uh, no men, ever. Unless they're... Um, uh, that The ones you're not supposed to do. The werewolf plus werewolf equals like Quasimodo type thing. <laughs> <Metis. Yeah. laughs> they're called Metis. <laughs> so they do make exceptions yes but only if you're like pretty much like fucking like quasimodo i guess like something like 100 i don't know i don't i've never i've never met one of... yeah we did we fought some of them down in that pit like the black spiral dancers i don't know if those were like metis uh, you didn't see the huge deformities they had? They were uh, I didn't know if that had, I didn't know if that had to, to do with something else like fucking magic or whatever. No, like those guys like breed with each other like crazy. That's why they're all like deformed oh, and messed ew, up. They're basically like ew, ancient. No, I'm getting out of the car. <laughs> I'm getting out of the car. I'm getting out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Pan Pandora officially bails on this conversation. <laughs> I'm not talking about inbreeding right now. <laughs> All right, I so you guys are heading to the house. <laughs> Rosaline. Yes. You are marching down the hallway. Um, the library door is open. Mm -hmm. um, you turn the corner and you see Liam's wife. 
Um, she is not in her ball gown. Yep. Um, she is in a black dress. Um, she is sitting in a chair. Um, she's wearing no makeup whatsoever. Her eyes are red and swollen. Her hair is, you can tell she took it out of the pins and whatever else she had holding it up and she looks like she just tore it loose it's just hanging around her head in a tangle mm -hmm. you can even see there's still some bobby pins sticking out of it yeah um she looks up as you come in and she stands up and she's watching you come in the door and as she as you are walking up to her you get about three steps away from her are you doing anything before, else before you get she's that gonna close the door she's gonna close the door okay, the study. close the door so you turn back around uh i'm assuming you've been walking towards her yep okay um are you doing anything else before you get like within like two three steps of her yep as soon as you get that close she falls to her knees and even through the floor she falls just collapses not even attempting to catch herself in any way shape or form and she is openly just brokenly weeping Rose is gonna get down on the floor let's get you back into a chair you you shouldn't be on the floor and she's sitting there and she's she's crying she's got her head held back, kind of like almost this tilted back and she's crying and she's her, she kind of leans her head forward and she looks at you and she says and she kind of like half smiles and she says he Never, ever stop talking about you. He was fading, you know. I know. He but was getting up there. But every time he came back, he would look for you around the house. When he stayed lucid longer, and he understood where he was, I told him where you were. He was so good for her. He wanted to go see you. We were going to go up to Seattle. We were going to pretend to be just normal people. Go to Fishman's Wharf. See your studio. writing things down so he could remind himself. They took him from our home.
they brought him to court and they accused him of being the leader of an insurrection. Who's better to blame than the House of Secrets? You know we always get blamed for everything. He... He didn't even know half the time what was going on. <clears throat> but when they told him what he was accused of and why, when they told him when they told him that you had refused the king's match and been banished and that that was why Liam wanted to remove the rightful king from the throne because he wanted to have his girl back at court. He wanted to restore her titles. He was him again for just that little bit. He stood there and he told him Hold the entire court that there is no justice in forcing anyone into a marriage they do not want, in forcing anyone into a union they do not want. And he said, He said that no king that had any honor would ever make such a proclamation. He didn't even get a trial. He made the entire court attend the execution. Yeah. He took his head with a cold iron blade. I thought towards the end, I was just waiting for him to say your name. Last thing he did before they put the hood on. He looked at me and he said he was sorry. when I understood everything. I didn't need him. You did. Walker. He knew who I was.
But no matter what, I couldn't protect her. Roger. We wanted you to have something. <laughs> he said that, uh, he failed you in at least one thing. And she kind of like pushes herself up off the floor. And she goes over and beside the desk, she leans down and she picks up a long wooden box. It's about, actually it's about four feet long. It looks kind of like a pool cue case, but it's bigger. She puts it down the desk and she clip unclips it. And she reaches in and she pulls out a incredible silver blade. The basket is filigree, looks like silver as well. Even in the dim light of the library, it literally shines with its own light. He said he never... He said he never actually showed you how to use one of these. He just said so. He always meant to give this to you. But he didn't want you to think that he was scared you couldn't take care of yourself. So he always talked himself out of it. And she, like, unsheathed it. And the, the blade is silver, the scabbard is silver. And she, and she sit and she like looks at it and she says, defend. And the blade leaps out of her hand and begins floating around her. And she says, return. And she it comes back and lands in her palm. And she she sit. She said, He had your hair, you know. He kept it from when you were little. He used it on this blade. You know, this is the most you've ever said to me. I just... I was always jealous of the connection you two had. It was so different than he and I. I didn't I never knew what to do with you. I did try. I'm sorry. I, I... I tried. I just thought and as close as you two were, I was just a distraction. He was teaching you. He was showing you magic, showing you the rules. And I just didn't want to get in the way. Honestly, I was scared. I saw the way he doted over you and I saw the He 
he and I we loved each other and I I don't know if it was the same thing he felt for me Maybe it was just the jealousy. Maybe it was just my own failing. <laughs> but it always seemed... <laughs> just a little bit more. been with him for 10 years and everything was amazing you deserve better And she she puts the sword back in the case. And she closes it and locks it, or latches it, I should say. And she rests her hand on the box. And she looks at you and she says, "If you have need of it." The estate is yours. I will never lay by that pale fire again. I don't think you would want me to leave it. Give it to someone who deserves it, then. She steps up to you. And she says... And she looks you right in the eyes. And she says, I trust your judgment. You were taught by one of the greatest men I ever knew. The ones who did this to him. I'm going to find them. And I'm going to kill them all. And I don't blame you. I hope you can save their friend. And then she turns and begins walking towards the door. He always spoke highly of you. She kind of stops. You had her hands on the doorknob. And she kind of, you hear her kind of chuckle. And she looks over her shoulder and she says, Of course he did. I'm amazing. <laughs> And she opens the door and walks out.
Did Liam Rose... have a nickname he, he used it for you or anything like that? He would call her Wee Lamb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Or Spitfire when she was acting up. Gotcha. And what were you going to say? I'm sorry. She's going to say to the house to put the sword into the master bedroom. And she is going to leave the room. She does not have time to grieve right now. <laughs> gotcha. Emery's. So the staircase, that open air staircase that had no rails... <clears throat> and just went up every floor has been replaced yeah. with a grand staircase made of oak and and it is you know the there's a traditional carpet runner that goes down the middle of the staircase um, yeah on wooden steps um it goes all the way up all three stories uh, oh no it goes up to the next floor i've got i came silly out as you go upstairs um there is the upstairs is mainly capped off at the end of the landing there is a sitting area that is about you know 20 foot by 20 foot and then there's it kind of tapers in towards at the at the far wall of the sitting area from where the stairs come up there is a uh, hallway about 10 foot wide that goes down um, mm -hmm. which means that there is like each one of the rooms is at least 10 feet wide um, you okay. look down the hallway and you see that there is a break about 20 foot down, which means two doors down, where another staircase seems to go downstairs somewhere. And uh, then there's two more bedrooms off the end of that. And then there is another staircase that goes down off of that at the end of the house. And there's a big window over that one. Um, as you're walking down the hall, as you kind of walking through there, uh, you see Penny. And she kind of runs up to the third door, which is the one just after the staircase on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. And she opens the door and she goes in. Okay, I will follow. Okay, well, and, you get uh, to the door. I'll, I'll, I'll get to the door, and I will kind of lean against the uh, the door frame. Do you want to talk, kiddo? I just, I think I just need some sleep, okay? I will just kind of nod, okay. And I'm just like, no provocation, no nothing. I'm just going to walk up to her and take her in my arms and give her, as gently as I can, the biggest hug I can. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you'd open the door. Oh, yeah, I, I figured she, I didn't realize she'd closed the door behind oh, her. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. She closed the door. I apologize. I should have okay. included that in the sentence about her going through the door. There you go. <laughs> How dare you make my notes inaccurate like this? Now I gotta <laughs> your face. Now you gotta take out maybe four words. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will then rewind that. Okay. Uh, I mean, you can still and... do that, but you can do it through a closed door. Right. I will ask if I can come in and say something to her. Like, do, do you mind if I come in and say something? I won't take long. I, I know you want to get some sleep, but I just, there's something that I need to say to you. You hear creaking and after a few minutes, you know, footsteps come over and the door opens. It just and it doesn't like throw open the door latch just turns and then the door pops open but it doesn't swing open. Okay, I I will push. I will gently push the door open because I don't know if she's right behind the door or not. Mm -hmm. So you push the door open. Um, you see that there is a huge four poster bed in the room. Uh, it is got a canopy over the top of it. Uh, it, these, the ceiling in here is like, man, 15 feet tall. Um, there is a dresser to one side. There is, uh, to the left side, there's a dresser, uh, directly beside the dresser on the right hand side. There's a set of, there's a door, um, 
on the other side of the bed from that door there is a set of double doors um and there is which would interestingly enough be the wall that goes into the staircase hmm. um there is a a big uh trunk at the foot of the bed um and there is a like sitting like a little sitting parlor type area in the uh just to your left as you come in the door that has like a little makeup station type desk, uh, vanity, sorry, a vanity. And then beside the vanity, there is a actual desk. And there's several bookshelves um, on the other, to the right of the door um, that are right before the double doors on the other side. Okay. And she is sitting on the bed and there's no lights on. So the room is very dark. I will uh, not. Well, I won't turn on any lights. I'll just like keep the door open, and I'll just come and sit down on the bed next to her, and like will not put my arm around her just yet. Um, we'll just kind of kind of nudge her a little bit with my shoulder. Like I know tonight has been. I feel like eventful does not do the evening justice. Um, I know a lot's happened tonight, and I know I know you. And I know that you are likely going to blame yourself for what happened. And I want you to know that I don't blame you because the fault is not yours. You are not in control of what happened. I know it looks that way. I know it, I know how it looks. I know how... I know that there may be words between you and Rose. But I want you to know that no matter what, I'm here. I love you. I will always love you. And it's not your fault. Oh, thanks for the raid, Grim Songbird. Hi, Grim. Oh, hi. Hi, Grim. Thank you so much for the raid. Um, hi. Emery, she's sitting there through that entire conversation, your half of that entire conversation. And um, she's kind of got her hands. She's sitting there with her legs dangling off the bed. She's got her hands on her thighs, kind of just resting there like that. And mm -hmm. she is kind of just staring at the f carpet a few feet in front of her. Mm -hmm. And there's tears just running down her face. And she says, When... When it came out, had to let it you can't just take it they told me something bad was going to happen and that we would need its power and we would need what it could do and I, I, I I I said yes. I I it picked me, right? I was I was supposed to Yeah, of course. So I said yes. And then it was it was driving, it was in control. And I I was just watching and I was like it's, it's Thank you very much for the follow. Josie eighty eight ninety eight, and then I was watching. I was like watching, just watching, and I realized I I I, I could hear it. I I knew it. I knew 
I could hear. <laughs> it was so cold. It knew. It knew someone had to die. It knew someone had to choose. That choice is not on you. It was using my memories. It's combing through my thoughts. It probably saw what... Thank you for the follow, Eddie. It... No. told me it was going to be there. And it knew and allowed Finn to make that choice. No. It counted on it. And that's when I tried. I tried so hard. I know you did. end of the day, sweetheart, that thing is just stronger. It is old. It is ancient, and it is powerful. There was nothing you could have done. You know it's going to happen again, right? Did it tell you that? Does it have to? Why else would it need a vessel? Why is it still there? If it's done, then why isn't it gone? <laughs> I can feel it. I don't know what lies ahead. I wish I did. My powers in that particular sphere are not nearly as great. Do you think we can honestly do anything about it? I don't know. Probably not. But I'll be damned if I'm not going to try for your sake. I gave it a way in. You didn't know this would happen. I didn't. Who, who makes an arbitrary deal like that? Who's that stupid but me? You are not stupid. You were trying to save your friend. <laughs> Compassion, empathy is never stupid. If we start believing that, that's when those things that we just, that we fought, that's when they win. Because they know that we will do nothing. They know that we will not stand in their way because we don't care, because we've stopped caring. That's why I do what I do, because someone has to. Someone has to care. I don't, I don't know if you get it. doing what needs to be done. And when it needs pawns to sacrifice, it's gonna be one of you all. Because, because I made a stupid fucking decision. I may have to watch all of you die because I'm the fucking host for this thing.
you are more than a host. You are more than a vessel. You know this. And I don't care if it's not by blood. You are my goddamn daughter. You are someone who I love dearly. And I will do everything I possibly can to make sure that you don't have to deal with this. Whether that thing inside you likes it or not. And I say it loud and I say it, but I raise my voice at that part, hoping that the dragon can hear me. She kind of sits there a second. And then she says, You know what? The worst part. Tell me. Is like next time. Next time, and there's going to be a next time. Huh. How bad am I going to let it get before I have to make the choice? It's not a choice I want you to make. Every time I when... sleep and I dream, it's told me that this is my path. says the same thing. This is the hardest thing I will ever do. But this is the hardest road to walk. never said that I would have to walk over the bodies of my family. I did not say it. But you tell that thing the next time it comes to you in your dreams. If it wants to hurt any more of us, of our family, but it's going to have to go through me. Because that's the only way it's going to stop me from trying to figure out how to undo this. She sighs. I'm really, I'm tired. I know. I will, at that point, I will just take her in my arms. I'll pull her in for as long of, of a hug as she'll let me. Mm -hmm. And I'll pull away, kiss her forehead. I love you very much, Shimira. Get some sleep. She, like, climbs onto the bed and just kind of, like, collapses on top of all the cover covers and everything like that. I will take like a the, the blanket from like the, the the duvet from the other side and just kind of burrito her <laughs> as best as I can. All right. Kiss, kiss her one more time uh, on her cheek, kind of smooth out her hair, and I'll walk out of the room and close the door. All right. Alrighty. It is nine twenty-seven, and uh, this is a good time to take our ten-minute break. Now, mm -hmm. number one, Grim Songbird, thank you so much for the raid. Um, we're really, really happy you could join us and all you raiders. Um, for the people who raided us, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been talking a little bit. Let me take it back. Okay. So for the people who raided us, um, we actually have a couple of things you get if you follow us. 
Uh, number one, you get our love, always and eternally, forever. Number two, when we hit 1,000 followers here, we are giving away this set of books, which is the D&D core set. It is the special edition core set with the Player's Guide, Monster's Manual, DMG, plus the GN screen. Comes with that beautiful little slipcase over there. Um, this is the foil stamped cover edition, which means the covers are shiny, the covers are sparkly, and they look different from the other D&D books that everyone else has. So if you make this your core set of books, you can take them to the game store without having to write your name in Sharpie on the edge of the book. Um, now, we're giving away this when we hit a thousand followers here on Twitch, and we are currently sitting at 737 followers, so we're getting ever closer. Um, so give us a follow if you can, we greatly appreciate it. Um, also, tonight, actually, kind of sort of right now, and we do this every single show, we give away a 3D printed mini. Now, I print these minis out, I have a giant pile of them that I've been sorting out and <laughs> getting into boxes because I'm so behind on shipping. But I have a giant pile of them and we're gonna be giving them a, one away. Now, there is several minis that we actually give away from and so the set we give away from, I should say. Um, what the heck just happened? I don't know. What? Did something happen? Oh, I hit the wrong thing. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You fool. I'm a fool. I hit the wrong button. Uh, so these are <laughs> the 3D. This is the 3D printed set that we're doing. It's oh, from dear. a company called Loot Studios. And this is called uh, The Cult of Hunger. The basic concept on the storyline is a, a noble Noel cult is attacking a cathedral. Uh, the bottom corner set of minis are the heroes who are defending the cathedral. Um, above that are the enemies who are attacking it. Um, and the cathedral's on the left, and the mini on the bottom left is actually from a different company called Archvillain Games, who also has a set based on molds, and that is called the Hyena Dragon. Now, I'll explain why I'm telling you all this. During every single show, we will give... Yeah, I broke the stream, Fox Rider. Uh, we will give away one 3D printer mini. It is <clears throat> the, always, no matter what. That 3D printing mini comes from either the three heroes or the knoll, and I'm changing things up a bit. Um, we will to we're going to start the contest now, okay? Um, and I actually thought of this the other day when I was doing the whole. Well, what do we? Why do we vote? Uh, normally we vote on which mini is given away, but this time and from now on, what I'm going to do is, all you need to do is follow the instructions there in chat. You type in exclamation point mini to be entered. When we come back, the we will see who wins the contest, okay? Now, you have to be present in chat to win, so at least stay alarmed to the end of the break. And the reason for that is the winner will pick which mini they get out of the two sections on the right-hand side. So either out of the enemies list or out of the heroes list. Okay? Now, you have to be following us to enter and to win. Um, but if we get ever get a hype train just started, we will also give to another lucky winner... And it can be the same person who wins the, first, the the one of the smaller minis, the hyena dragon, which is a dragon that dragon in that picture, and it's on a hundred millimeter base, so that base is like close to six inches wide, um, and that dragon is probably close to nine ten inches tall, so that is a big big mini. But if you look at the cathedral, you can see in the top right corner of the picture of the cathedral, you can see all those minis in there. Those are the minis from the con from the other two screens. So you can see, using them as a comparison at 28 millimeters, how big that freaking cathedral is. We've already given one away, but if we ever complete a hype train during a show, we give a, we will give away the cathedral. Now, all that being said, all you have to do to be entered to win is type exclamation point mini in chat, and then wait until the end of break where we will draw the winner and see what they pick. Um, if you guys get a hype train started during the break, then we will also give away the dragon mini. And if you complete one in the break, we will give away the cathedral. Um, but we do this every single show, so please join us. Um, and I'm going to extend something else out. I just thought about this. If we get a hype train going at any time during the show, we'll give away the dragon. And if we get a hype train completed at any time during the show, we'll give away the cathedral. All right? So... <laughs>
let's go ahead and take a 10 minute break it is 9 32 we are going to be back at 10 02 um we will also be having these minis up in the break window so you can look at them and we will be drawing the mini winner the contest winner when we get back so we will see you all in 10 minutes we love you and thank you all for being here
ladies and gentlemen thank you for waiting so patiently um wow the trauma that's been happening inside our cast chat um yeah there's bad things if has anyone ever seen an avocado furby i just i just don't like that furbies always look like they've seen every lovecraftian monster at the same time i don't like it all right so has I want a cursed Furby. I want one so okay, bad. Okay, but then get like a normal cursed Furby, like a long no. Furby. No, I Not... want no. I want the Toy Story Woody one, where it's just the face of like the Furby, and it wears. Terrible. No. You have some creepy wants. <laughs> is a vampire game. Uh, it is actually a what they call an orphans game. Where we have a little bit of everything. We normally have a vampire with us, but she couldn't make it tonight. Um, we have Sphinx, who is playing Emery's Grant, who is an Order of Hermes mage. Uh, Milagros is playing Pandora, who is a Black Fury uh, werewolf. 
we have Jonathan, who's playing Mark, who is a, a, a Simba, a lion bastet. And we have M, who is playing Rosaline, who is a she changeling. So it is a little bit of everything. All rolled into one. But right now, if you want to make sure you're entered, type in exclamation point mini as we are doing our giveaway for the 3D printed mini of the night. Now, uh, the 3D printed mini is going to be one of the minis on the two panels on the right hand side. Um, we have the heroes at the bottom and we have the boss. Oh, sorry, we have the enemies at the top. On the left hand side, we have our rewards that will be given away if we get a stream uh, a hype train started we give away the no the hyena dragon at the bottom and if we complete a hype train we give away that giant effing cathedral which i haven't even started printing yet and i need to get on that shit um but we uh, get that giant we give away that giant cathedral which if you see those those figures inside of the cathedral those are the minis from the right hand side the 28 millimeter so you need to split, p t type exclamation point mini to get entered and we are going to close that contest out in just a couple of seconds because we're ready to do this giveaway we do it on the break every show which we take roughly around 9 30. so uh we're going to close the entries in three two one Oop. entries all closed no one can do anything else we are going to pick a winner, and let's see who won, and they will get to ch tell me which mini they want. Uh, Radur, you have won. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, oh. So I'm going to put the minis up again um, uh, on the screen real fast. Um, if you want to, and you don't want to make a choice right now, Radur, if you want to join our Discord, you can DM me, and I can just send you these photos, and you can look through them, and you can tell me which mini you want. Uh, the link for our Discord is now in chat. But if you want, if you know which one you want already, just tell me which one out of the two panels on the right hand side that you want to we want to pick from. Did we leave chat or something? I do not know. There he is. Or they are. Done. Okay. Uh, if you're already in our Discord, yes, DM, DM me. Um, and I will go ahead and, like I said, I can even send you these pictures so you can look through them. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. If you want to win a mini, remember, we do this giveaway at the break on every single show. Um, we have uh, Emerald Sanctums, which is on Tuesdays. We have Kingdoms of Mist, which is on Wednesdays. We have M's show, which is Monster Hearts The Breakfast Club. Uh, Monster Hearts 2 The Breakfast Club which is on Saturday mornings. And um, in, in a month, we're going to be debuting my new Firefly campaign, which is going to be every other Friday. Um, so that is coming up. All that's coming up soon. And we're going to do a giveaway on the break of every single show. So, ta-da! That's how you can win minis. And those rules apply for every single show. If we get a hype train going, the dragon gets given away. If we complete a hype train, the cathedral gets given away all it needs to do is one of those two things has happened and then we still give away the normal mini at the break so all that being said do, 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 do. back to the depression mm -hmm. <laughs> mark what have you been doing uh well i'm headed into the house okay and uh, I'm going to find Alfred. Okay. I remember distinctly he was told to make sure he helped us out and took care of things. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask him to take me to the Bellfire. Um, he kind of looks at you and he says, it's the fireplace. I'm going to go to the fireplace. Is the fireplace the Bellfire? It seems to be. You can detect glamour, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely glamour. Cool. I'm going to uh, put my three things that need to be near this stuff to start recharging again in a safe spot near the fireplace. And I put them up on the mantle or something like that? Yeah. Okay. Maybe like uh, like make sure the crown has something um, kind of like keeping it from just falling down. I just don't want it to end up in the fire. Because <laughs> it is currently a paper Burger King crown. <laughs> yes, it is currently paper. And the last thing I want is to not have my, my circlet again. 
Uh, and then I'm going to figure out what the state of affairs is in the house, so I know where I probably shouldn't be. Uh, well, um, the only person you see right now is Alfred. Oh, wait, Pandora, where'd you go when you came inside? Um, I came in through whatever. The garage entrance, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, wherever it is, like, Actually, in from no the garage. the garage entrance. There's, there's a walk path that goes around from the garage that goes around the house. Okay. Um, and because he didn't open the garage doors and it goes to the back okay. doors that come into the living room, the big glass back doors. Okay. So that's where you come in from if you don't go through the garage itself. Okay. Um, uh, well, I don't know if I want to ask for Rose just in case, like, she doesn't want to talk to anybody. I don't, like, I'm going to go and kind of, like, see who's who's visibly, like, out in in the front. If there the is anybody. The no, no, no. Like, I'm going to go into the house and mm -hmm. see, like, who's... Well, like... remember how the house is divided. Um, the garage is on this the the uh, if you're looking at the house facing to the north which is the front of the house on the e west side there's the road that goes around to the side the garage is on the side okay uh there is either you can come into the garage door and that leads actually into technically uh the hallway that goes right up uh, up to where the basement door is and everything like that the little side door and so that's where the hallway comes to the garage um but it goes along the house, and then on the other side of the that wall from that hallway is the entry to the master bedroom and the two other doors in that hallway, which one is a library, um, the other one you don't even know what the door is, or is behind the door. Um, there is the master bedroom, master bath, and everything like that is that in the house, and then there's the living room and kitchen area in the center of the house on one side, and on the other side... There is the huge dining room with that big table. And then there's the entryway and the staircase that goes up on just on the other, uh, like kind of directly to the left of the front of the front doors and directly to the right is the huge dining area. Now, of course, the appointments of those rooms have completely changed. And I'll let Rose pick how they look now because this is now her. <laughs> you, you can go to town whatever you want you don't have to pick it now it's something you can think about you get to decorate the entire house except for everyone's individual rooms which the house tailors it in i mean i think it would look like how her house used to very like antiquey very homey artsy mm -hmm. kind of cottage court there we cottage go kind core. of cottage core. gotcha excellent so you can get that you get that very much feel of lived in house for the most part like there's little personal things for from you all over the place um you actually literally find like some of your smaller sketches and paintings that you had left in the studio um mm -hmm. that you hadn't framed or anything yet you find them like framed and hung on walls you find them like you know sitting around and oh, and behind the kitchen, there's an area that no one has ever gone to yet. There's a little hall that goes off the kitchen. It's kind of goes behind the staircase and between the staircase and the kitchen, and it goes off back behind the kitchen. But no one's ever gone back there. So, I mean, now I want to go there just because you pointed it out and said that nobody had gone there. No one had gone there. Mm -hmm. What what's 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 back I there? I feel like he's baiting you. I it's, I, I feel, no, of course he's baiting me. And I'm oh, going to take this a bait. huge pool. Oh, it's the pool. Oh, oh, okay. Nope, it's not the pool. That you go out through the same glass doors you came into the living area. Remember? Are you sure it's a pool? Are you sure it's a pool? It's your house. It is not a pool. What, what? is it? There's going to be some like fish ponds out there. Moss. The ground is moss. So beautiful, pure oxygen is coming out of the ground. Nice. Yep. Are they like koi ponds? Mm hmm Dun dun dun. A pool fox There's a pool of blood. So <laughs> nice. Oh my god. So yeah, so the the oh, you know what? 
that would make sense with like a cottage core house. Yeah. The backyard would be like a little a garden. Yeah. <clears throat> with ponds and like little bridges and everything like that. A gazebo. And a gazebo. <laughs> a gazebo. A living enchanted evil gazebo, <laughs> but a gazebo nonetheless. All right. So So anyway, Pandora, you come in through those back doors. Um you see that uh Arthur is in the kitchen. Um and you, he's the only person you can see in the house proper. Arthur? Alfred. Sorry, Alfred. My bad. Yeah, I was like, who, uh, Arthur? Who's that? Arthur. Like, I don't remember Arthur. Arthur. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go up to him and ask if he knows where Rose is. Last I saw her, she was speaking with her mother in the library. So I remember that she said the shitty childhood thing. So I'm going to assume it's the mother. (laughs) Because the father seemed very important. So I'm assuming she's in a worse mood, maybe? Oh. Oh, Rose. Oh, God. Rose didn't mean, like, before she met Liam and her other mom. Oh, God. She didn't get context. (laughs) So... Like she didn't, she didn't specify. So I'm assuming that she fucking hates her mom. Then, um, okay. Uh, are we are we still allowed to go to our rooms? Is... He kind of looks at you. He's like, I'm assuming so. It's I mean, just... the house's layout has changed somewhat, but I'm assuming you're going to still have a room. Yes. How do we figure out where those are since this is not the house that we were? Oh, I have no idea. Okay. I just got here. Literally, I appeared here. I have no oh. idea how I got here. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I'm, I've been working for the lady for a while. I'm used to it. Oh, Okay. Um, <laughs> um okay um do you know what in what direction the bedrooms are now or oh the staircase is still in the same general location by the front door oh, okay <clears throat> um and i'm gonna go in that direction okay if i happen to run into <clears throat> rose then I'll stop and like check on her. So as you're walking that direction and uh-huh. you know you see a woman <clears throat> in a who's her face is just she looks terrible. She looks like she's been crying and she kind of just she's walk she's ahead of you, so she walks like towards the same front door you're walking towards. Um and but she doesn't turn to go up the staircase. She just goes and she opens the door and walks out. I'm assuming that's the shitty mom. Oh, that sucks. Um, I, I'm gonna take Rose at her word. She said, like, she didn't specify. Um, and Rose, okay. you said after that you walked out of the house to go and we're going to the kitchen, right? She's walking out, going towards the kitchen, and looking for brisket at the same time. Her little gremlin child. You don't see brisket anywhere. Brisket, buddy. No answer. Oh boy. She's gonna ask the house where brisket is. The house is like he hasn't been here since you left. She's gonna look in her bag because she's carrying it. So there's your usual stuff in your bag. Yeah. Plus there's a bunch of credit cards that you don't recognize. Of course. A watch. Yep. A bunch of gold coins. A ring you lost a long fucking time ago. 
three of your hair clips. And a very, very small silver statuette of a platypus. No. No, 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 no. She's going to pick it. She's going to pick up the statuette. It's a very detailed statue of a kind of odd-looking platypus. Daddy, the platypus. <laughs> I can't make the noise. <laughs> Can I guess this is brisket? Can I summarize this is brisket? Well, when you originally created brisket as mm -hmm. in your childhood, yeah, what was your inspiration? Okay, so this is this is going to be a 90s reference. So in the 90s, they used to make these really big, fluffy, flat platypus toys that were, like, super, super fluffy for some reason. Mm -hmm. I remember those. Yes, that was literally what it was. And she's like, she, you know, she's like, no, no, I want a living one, and I think platypus are really cool, and I think it just needs to have a pocket to store everything. It'll be fine. Like, a pocket that never ends. Then rewind... Yep. Instead of the silver statue, it's a plushie of that platypus. Oh, boy. Mm. Great. First, I lost my compassion earlier. Then, I lose Finn. And now I lost the thing that has literally been with me since I was a child. And your dad. Don't forget your dad. And my dad died. Tuesday suck. Apparently. Um, can Pandora see Wait. her from like the area that she's in at this point? I think you uh, forgot Beyonce. I said Finn died. Well, she said Finn. Said Finn oh. died. Yeah, she said Finn. Yeah, she she, she mentioned Finn. <laughs> Sorry. Make me. Uh, hmm. Yes. Would this be gray mare or would this be a cult? Uh, if it's glamour related, it's gray mare. It's gray mare. They make gray okay, mare so I have glamour expertise. Uh, uh, gray mare and what? Uh, um, gray mare and intelligence. Sweet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Difficulty what? Uh, difficulty is a seven. Oh, this shouldn't be too hard. Let's hope I get a 10 on one of these, because then I get to roll more dice. Yep. And two successes out of the 10. One, two, three, four, five. Roll another die. Yay, another die. Huzzah. Six. Six successes. All right. <clears throat> this is Niffler. Whatever that wave of banality that hit earlier was, don't do it. Since Niffler is just manifested banality, or not manifested glamour, I mean, he only holds three glamour. So if he had any glamour in him, it was all wiped out. Yeah. Now, because Niffler did not go below his glamour threshold, he could possibly be restored. Can I sit him in front of the little fireplace and just wrap a little blanket around him? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. He's going to have to sit next to the bale fire. Yeah. And he's going to have to be fully restored and he gets he 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 can gain because he Unless you're going to push glamour into him, which will cost you a permanent point of glamour to push a glamour into him too, because it's like re-enchanting re him. So you have to yeah. spend the permanent glamour. It's going to take him three days to fully re-enchant on his own. 
That's fine. That is fine. She's just gonna. She's just trying to keep it together right now because she does. She can't lose it right now. She really can't. She's just gonna just pick him up, pick the little stuffed animal up, find a blanket, wrap him up, and just sit him in front of the fireplace. <laughs> He's all wrapped out, up in a blanket. <laughs> look at Alfred. Be like, no one's allowed to touch that. Alfred's like, do I go get the shotgun? No, you do not need the shotgun, Alfred. I've come to really like the shotgun. It makes me feel better. Go get the shotgun. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Pandora, you do see Rosaline. Oh, no. You see what she's doing and hear what she tells Alfred. Yeah, I don't have the... the 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 real person capacity for this so i'm gonna shift into lupus form okay uh you and... make me uh the primal urge uh roll okay or is it a gnosis roll jonathan i forget primal urge he's muted but i get i saw him mouth it <laughs> Wait, sorry, what, uh, six, right? Yes. For lupus, it's a six. Yep, I got a success, I'm good. Actually, you can see the difficulty on the sheet, on the back page, where it has each one of the forms, it has a difficulty for sheep shifting at each form underneath it. Oh. Okay. Underneath it or above it, I can't remember. It's been a long it's time. It's under the stat part. It's, uh, it's yeah. there, though. Yeah. Yeah. So it has a difficulty for each form underneath it. It should be a six. You said, which one do you want to go to? Lupus. Oh, lupus. Uh, lupus. That should be a six. Yeah. Yeah. I got a success. All right. Um, so it takes you a little bit because, you know, stress, everything else, and Rose is really upset, and you're just mad scrambling at this point to try and find some way to cheer up. But you do manage to ship into a lupus. By the way, I did tell you that when you learn to change, uh, one of the rituals you went through when you joined the Black Furies, uh, the pack you joined, uh, which wasn't all Black Furies, by the way. It was mixed. But when you join the pack, one of the first things they teach you is to bind a set of clothes to you magically. And then whenever you transform, you don't just, like, strip out of your clothes. The clothes you were wearing get destroyed. But when you change back into human form, the magical set come, is, is on you. So when yeah. you change chips, you don't necessarily destroy your clothes and then come back naked. Yeah. Very, very nice to not do that. Um, yeah, so oh. I'm going to go... Oh, thank you for the raid, Azaline. Really appreciate it. Hi, welcome. Oh, thank you. We got two raids today. Yes, it's amazing. I like it. I like mm -hmm. it. So, yes. So when you shift your and when you shift back to your human form, you'll be wearing whatever outfit you choose. You could have okay. even bound the suit to you. <laughs> you it. shift That's back true. and you're always in a badass suit. It's always in a fucking <laughs> suit. Um. Yeah, so she's, she's going to pad over and, like, just kind of, like, kind of bump Rose with her head. Get that real good dog lean. Like. <laughs> um. Hi, Pandora? She's going to kind of keep headbutting her. Just give her head scratches. <laughs> well, because, like, I don't, like. I don't know what else to do. Like, and I don't like. I see the plushie in the blanket, but no, everyone was told not to touch it. So, <laughs> you know, I'm curious about it, but like, I'm not gonna touch it. Um, so she just looks at the stuff. In, that's Emery's fault. That's brisket right now. <laughs> yep. And then I gotta wait for the rest of Finn's people to get here. Um, I'm gonna go in front of her and just kind of like, like sit on her feet. <laughs> it's a very big fucking wolf, by the way. Yes. <laughs> like... <laughs> so this is like 110 pounds just plopped down on your feet. Um, are you telling me I'm not allowed to go anywhere now? No, <laughs> but I gotta get stuff done. Oh my! 
Jonathan, no. Um, so okay, uh, there was a there was a miscommunication. So gonna get, gonna get up and go to like the nearest like seat or chair and just kind of stare at it. Rose is gonna go sit down. Okay. <laughs> And we're gonna wait for the rest of Finn's people to get there. She ain't got time to sleep right now. Not yet. As you're sitting there, you hear in your voice, Are you... A voice in your head, I should say. Are you... Sitting for a minute? Mm-hmm. Okay. We said when you had a minute. So you have a minute, right? Yes. Okay. On the wall at the back of the uh, living room, the uh, TV turns on. Oh, no. 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 And you see no. that underneath the TV, there's an old VHS machine. And you see the tape sticking out of it, and it just slides in. No. And there is a little bit of flicker on the screen, and then it comes up, and uh, Finn's sitting there. And he says... So, I wanted to make sure that whatever happens, if anything happens, I wanted to make sure that you knew that no matter what it was amazing every second I got to spend that I spent with you was the most <laughs> important moment of my life, which is a really devastating thing to feel for like hours at a time. So I wanted to thank you. I know I blurted out something stupid, but I just wanted to let you know that I really meant it. I didn't know if anyone ever really cared for me before. Because uh, how can you tell with just by standing around someone? They tell you that they've fallen in love with you or that they're going to devote their lives to making everything right or everything else they said <laughs> but when we woke up and the first thing you did was throw me out of my own bedroom <laughs> I think that's when I knew and I literally marched in here and had Rose record this so, you're going to be spending whatever time you spend in there with Pandora getting ready. And I'm going to be out here missing each one of those devastating spe seconds that I'm not 
I need to spend with you right now. Pandora is such a pain in the ass. <laughs> but I know she's important to you. So I told Tuck to make her pledge an oath to me for one very important reason. I knew if I fell that I was leaving this all to you. And since Tuck worded the oath to protect the Lord of the manor, that oath falls to you. So, no matter what, you have to remember you helped me be better. I didn't know what that felt like because I thought I was perfect. But you made me see that there could be something better than that. And it wasn't just you, although, yeah, it was us. It would have been wonderful. Oscar. I love you. And then the recording stops. She sits there quiet for a moment, and then all you hear her say is, You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> but it's not malicious. It's not malicious in <laughs> any way. It's not malicious. No, like... <laughs> Emery's. Hmm. You're coming downstairs. Yep. Mark. Burger King foot lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> I've been dying to say that since you said the crowd turned into a Burger King crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so you put everything on the bail fire to recharge. What did you do after that? I don't really have anywhere else to go. So, I mean, this is kind of where I've been hanging out. You're not going to go to your room? <laughs> I mean, I can at some point. I just... It's kind of been an interesting, weird night, and I don't really feel like sleeping yet. So, have you been, like, just perching on a bar stool, watching everyone come and go and not making any noise? Probably just trying to figure out what's going on in this new weird house. Like the house is already weird, but now it's a new kind of now weird. Now it's a new, it's a completely new yeah. Yeah. iteration of weird. Excellent. I mean, it's not picking on me anymore, so that's nice. Like it's it's lowered the bully threshold by a couple of notches. I mean, I feel like the principal came in and told the house how it's got to be. So I got maybe like another four hours before the bullying starts again. <laughs> so you're using this brief for pass to just relax for a bit. Yes. All right. So you're sitting there and you 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 watched this all happen. And Rose doesn't even realize I'm in the room, right? Nope. You're sitting like remember I said that it's kind of a great room from kitchen all the way to living area. You're sitting like at the end of the bar, which is also like where there's a little breakfast nook off of the side of that 
that faces into the backyard. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of like at the very edge of, you know, the the rooms, I guess you'd say. And so I guess they just really were, since Pandora was busy turning into a puppy and trying to distract Rose, and the yeah. house started talking to Rose, and then it told, this started playing the tape. Also, they have a key. No one's really noticed you yet. Rose is still in the room? Mm, she's in the living area, but she's visible from where you are. Oh no! If she left, I'm not going to talk to her. She's doing. She her hasn't own left. Thing. She hasn't left. No, she's still. Uh, I'm just going to kind of like, just sort of say quietly, he really was like a nice guy. Emery, this is about the time that you're walking down the stairs, and you hear that. He was, wasn't he? I mean, I walk into the kitchen. You, you just met him, but I lived in the area for like a year, and he was always really cool about everything. I can only imagine. You want a drink? I need a drink. Do you want a drink? Yeah, I'd love a drink. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty I, sure you meant that to Rose, but I'm going to respond anyway. No, no, no. I, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was talking to Mark. <laughs> hey, oh, okay. Rose, you want a drink? <laughs> and then, and then I go, Rose, can I pour you something? Not yet. I still have business that needs to get done before I can even do anything else. Sure. Do and you need help with something? I got to talk to the rest of Ben's people. When they get here. If they get here. I'm sure they will. I'll turn back to Mark. You like scotch? Also, there was a mention there was a slua that lives in the house. I'm going to look at Emrys while I'm, I'm, I'm going to briefly look at Emrys, look back at Rose when she said that. Look back at Emrys, quickly say, top shelf question mark, and then look back at it and Rose will be like, where in the house? I don't know. Like I opened the cabinets looking for top shelf scotch. <laughs> like you you there's a amazing uh like you have a squatter? Nineteen sixty four Glenlivet. I nice. <laughs> I think like he might be one of Ben's scotch. people. This'll do. <laughs> Do you want the squatter in your house? I mean, I'm not kicking anybody out that's been living here. Okay, so is it a squatter or is it a tenant? I'm very confused now. Tenant. They worked for Finn. So they do pay rent. A whispery (sighs) voice kind of like comes out of nowhere and you hear the voice and he's Murder hobo. <laughs> Murder hobo. Finn, Finn never charged me rent because I and did the security. I pull out another glass. <laughs> no! You don't see anything. I know. I just pull out another glass. I figured he might want one. I, I turn to Mark. Ice? No ice. I'm gonna think. Second and ice, definitely cool. ice. So ice for you ice turn for it back Mark. around like you're gonna go to the refrigerator for ice, but mm-hmm. you see there's now two little of oh, those those wooden ice buckets inside the ah. fridge, and one has cubed ice and one has crushed ice. Cubed, crushed. Have a preference. Cubed, gotta be cubed. Cubed. I take a few cubes of ice, uh, or I take the the glass, kind of scoop up some cubed ice with it. Uh, put it on the counter. When you open the cube and... dice thing. All the cube dice is those little. Uh, they're actually balls, and they're the little Death Stars. Ah, nice. Yeah. Put <laughs> <laughs> the, the Death Star in there, uh, and then I, I, I kind of like speak to the disembodied voice. Uh, ice in your drink? Yes. No. As you're doing that, right beside you, it looks like, it looks like something two dimensional, turns to face you. So, like, you know, it's like there's nothing there, and then it turns, 
And it's Murder Hobo. Oh, it's like Paper, <laughs> Paper Mario. Nice. Um, he kind of says, yeah, ice, please. And he is, face is streaked. His makeup is running because his face is streaked with tears. I, I, I take him by the shoulder. I gently squeeze it. Crushed her, the Death Star. Never deny the Death Star, man. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> I give him a Death Star. I will pour their uh, their glasses first. I'll hand them each, uh, to each of them. Uh, I will pour some for myself with no ice because I prefer my own neat. <laughs> and we'll cap the bottle. Yes, fin. Pandora? Um, are the buckets covered? Yes, they have lids. Dang. Okay, so I'm going to go over while Emrys is like doing his thing and just start eating the crust ice right out of the bucket. <laughs> she just sticks her she's yep, paws just, up on the counter. She's like yep, just she's now, almost, she's basically almost as tall as Emery's when she stands up on her hind legs. So just like, paws up on the counter, she starts Pandora sweating. eats ice one hundred percent. Pandora do you, can I just get you a bowl of ice? Would that work? Just let her eat out of the bucket. Just let her eat out of the bucket. Mom said I can eat out of the bucket. Mom said I can eat out of the bucket. I mean, I mean didn't that just become Pandora's bowl? I mean, yeah, are you really who else is going to right now? <laughs> Probably not. No, Dog no you're slumber. right. Just that's yeah. I'm, all I'm of that like, is her clink ice. All of my ice on crushing. the cup. That's the only reason why I wanted ice, so I could clink it around in the cup. Clink, 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 clink. <laughs> Rose is gonna get up off the couch, yeah. walk by little uh, bundled up plushy brisket, give it a little pat, and then continue. <laughs> Into the kitchen. Emery's. Yeah. Um, you almost killed Brisket. Oh, I'm really sorry. Yeah. Free coffee so... for life. Mm hmm. Free coffee for life. I don't drink coffee. Tea. Free tea for life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't I already get tea for free at the shop? Unofficially, yeah. How about I get a, a name a drink after you? You get to design the drink. Okay. She's I don't know. I don't know how to make this better. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you tell me how to make this better, and I will do what I can to make that better. I, I, I don't know what I can. Do. Don't bleed out whatever you were doing around me ever again. Deal. Okay. She'll look at the tall guy and be like, "I haven't met." you yet he's like he kind of like looks at you and he goes down on one knee ah! <laughs> oh. and he says in, a, in that very whispery voice says my lady Rosaline I am your vassal and your servant I pledge my oath to serve thee to protect thy house to keep the I... laws, to maintain your holdings in your absence. I swear this by my heart and by the bale fire. I, I take a I take a sip of my scotch and I lean over to Mark. Well, the scotch Shakespearean real quick. Was that another oath of fealty? Yep. It always does. Yeah. <clears throat> Wait till she makes us do pledges of some kind. Oh, I already took one. Well, we, we I'm, I'm assuming you're still in wolf form, so we can't. Yeah, yeah, no, y'all. <laughs> we don't understand. <laughs> that. No, so I was going to say, like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> turn, turn around in wolf form and just, like, bow and then be like, oh, shit, wrong form. Hold on. Wrong form. <laughs> so, just as he, as he finishes saying that, the air in the entryway shimmers. Tuck appears. And he looks like a red cap. Oh shit. Tuck. And behind him are two ogres. Behind them are two, uh, oh, sorry, three knockers. And there is 
In front of them are two Boggins. Good God, Finn. And Tuck God, says... Finn was a hoe. And Tuck says, <laughs> I have gathered all the, the vassals in the area who are pledged to Lord Finn's holdings. He says, he looks around, he's like, this shit. I totally forgot M. Rosalind's actual last name. Her fey name, sorry. Her true name? Yeah. Her true name is Ashling O'Shea. And he's, he kind of stops and he says, Oh yeah, y'all are going to hear this for the first time. That's going to be interesting as shit. <laughs> this is the Lady Ashlyn O'Shea. She is now your liege. She will provide you access to her bail fire. Her protection. You will provide your loyalty and your fealty. He says, each one of you will make your own vow. Independently. I give, I give Mark a confused look for a second, and then it clicks, and my eyes go wide, and I look at uh, <laughs> at Rose. I'm like, he says, "We will discuss any fife, fifing of glamour, or any other compromises that were made between you and Lord Finn." At a later date. He turns. Lady Rosalind, did you wish to address them? Yes. As you are all aware as to what happened tonight. Well, mm. last night, it is now morning. And most of them nod. One of the Boggins says, I think the entire kingdom is aware, lady. Just so you are aware, this may not be permanent. And they all kind of like look befuddled. There is a way. I'm not sure if it's fully possible, but I will do anything to get him back. And uh, the two Boggins in front, one's like a younger looking man, mm -hmm. but the other one is probably a grump. She looks older. And she kind of steps forward and she says, My lady, you cannot think of doing this. Do you know what it means? He may come back, but what's the cost? someone else I understand that lady that it hasn't been talked about openly I know your house my lady I know they have powers but I have not even heard your house crossing that line I won't be the one crossing the line it doesn't matter It'll be Finian who was made to pay the final price. What happens when he wakes up and he's not him full, his full self? If he even wakes up, you also stand the chance of losing him forever if it doesn't work. I know. Just remember Seeming's return. This, and she kind of like taps her own chest, this is frail. This fades. We are eternal. I just have to be patient. Can I really wait for a year and a day? And I will wait, have to wait how long? 
after that because they'll be born into a child. Or they could, the chrysalis could come open sooner. You could, you could be born into another human who is, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. How about this? We'll wait a year and a day if nothing happens. We'll go from there. Uh, I hate to always be the one that jumps in with stuff. But um, out of all the abilities here, can't somebody figure out like who would be Faye or could be Faye, but hasn't awakened yet? There is a process that happens. It varies by age. I'm one of the rare exceptions. I was a child when I went through my chrysalis. Okay, but what I mean is like... Um, it, they like, have... Like, Let's say we just went to a mall. Could somebody point at people no. and say, like, that person will eventually awaken, that one's, like, no. eventually going to be a fae? There's no. no way to figure that out. Not until after certain criteria are met. No. Hmm. And does Finn's body have to go back into somebody that could have been fae, or can, like, <clears throat> you manufacture the criteria? And the young, the older Boggan kind of looks like, what do you mean Finn's body? We were told well, he died. Well, I mean, Finn's <laughs> essence. Like, Seeming. does it have to go into, like, a fey... He had a bale a... death? Yes. His seeming is not released. It's with Mab. You left his seeming with a witch? <laughs> What vow did you take? What oath did you pledge? None. You left his seeming with the witch? Do you think I had a choice? You could have brought him home. It would have been within your rights. You're his betrothed. She offered you something, didn't she? deal with the dark court it only ends in suffering and she turns and she looks around at the others and she says I need time and she goes to walk and tucks us I will take you home miss and she says no I will find my own way she walks out the door. And Tuck kind of looks around. He's kind of... He says, I will take everyone else home. They can make pledges later. If they wish. I'm not forcing it upon anybody. And... Them later. If they choose not to pledge... Mab is currently acting as queen, and they will be in rebellion. I lean over to Mark. Well, that doesn't sound good. No. No, it doesn't. Ray, what happened when I did that thing earlier? Which one? The maps. Was able oh. to draw any kind of line? Hmm. The all the you drew the initial line. Okay. Then you drew the next line, and then you do the here. final line. Yeah, and then you, yeah. So. Well, I can't draw a final line yeah. from here. I've only been to two places. Yeah. But I can draw lines. Yes. Oh, then I'm gonna look at Emrys. Emrys. 
I can't say it, but I've got really good news. If you have, they really can good fix news, some of this stuff. If you have really good news, why can't you say it? Because everything has ears around here. We're in the Fey realm. Gotcha. Okay. Rose is just eyeballing Mark right now. <laughs> and that's a good place to wrap for the night. <laughs> hey, wait, I want to do one more thing. Okay, go ahead. Go, go Pandora, go. You yeah, eat that ice. I want to, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crunch, crunch, yeah, crunch, crunch, crunch. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a little more ice. Um, do I have to roll anything to turn back into a human? That, that's your natural state, right? No, that's free. Yeah. Okay, bet. Uh, so I'm going to, I so I ate a little more ice. Um, so that's fun <laughs> as hell. Um, and then went into, you know, human again and goes to Rose and, um, I don't know if I have to say all the words and stuff again. I have them recorded, but um, I I did a vow thing with Tuck, and from what Finn said, I guess like like I'm yours now. But I would do it anyway because you're my friend. So thanks. Shall I too bow to be your friend. Yep. She'll look at Tuck. She's like, "Oh, Tuck left to take everyone home." Damn it! I didn't even get a chance to say the one thing that she wanted to say after the fucking old lady left. Oh. No, because she's gonna be like, "Hey, do you feel like breaking into the fucking castle? And bring Finn home." <laughs> <laughs> you want to do a heist? That'll be, that'll be a good opening conversation for next week. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, I can't wait for you to say that. <laughs> 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 we gotta wait a whole week. Hey, hey, hey! What if? I'm just saying, Use what if we tried raiding Mab's castle? Yeah, why, why don't we little. try that? Let's go my, get my, Finn. <laughs> my favorite part about this is, like, once you say that, I'm going to start realizing maybe the the walls don't have ears because, like, saying something like that was the exact reason why I didn't want to say my thing. <laughs> <laughs> She's so right, like, oh, okay, sweet. here's okay. the thing. Here's the thing. Rose is still an unsailing like, because she has to be at at least 24 hours. And she gives no fucks right now. She has yeah. no fucks to give. Yeah, you had no fucks to give when you were talking shit to Mab in the first place. She still wants to talk shit to Mab. I know. She's a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> how is everyone doing? Sp- check right, you know. Oh, I'm everyone... good. I'm good. Everyone's I'm good? gonna go to bed after this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pass the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so thank you guys so much for part one of emotional damage. Uh, <laughs> you mean part, two? part one? Part two? Oh yeah, we haven't really gotten into Penny yet, and you know. Oh yeah, I talk. still gotta hit. I still gotta hit Pen- Penny at some point. Oh You've God. already hit her. <laughs> I gotta hit Realizing her again. that Penny's actually the evil mastermind behind everything. I mean, no, we're, we're still a couple steps away. Here's like the you thing. realize Rose. Rose has taught Penny to be an independent woman, to stand on her two feet, and not, you know, be a be a very strong woman. What is Penny not doing right now? No, but but this is all part of what she needs to do to make sure that we don't realize she's the evil genius behind <laughs> everything so that she can continue her plans forward to prove that she really is a strong, independent woman that's going to conquer the entire world on her own. <laughs> I feel like Emerus be... is just going to start threatening to drop houses on people now. How did, be, like how did the girlest happen. boss of all time destroy the universe? Uh... Great. She's so, like, oh, look, Daddy, look what I'm doing. The entire world's burning around everybody. <laughs> Why, Daddy? I have all the powers now. <laughs> right, right. The last thing Rosalind gets in her head is, what do you want me to do with the fridge? <laughs> she does save have it. a fridge. Save <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> Later, save it. You know what? Ro- no, Rose is like, you know what? We might need it later for other things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you guys for being with us. Thank you, audience, for staying up with us. Um, we are going to go ahead and let people get to sleep. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and give a moment to let all my amazing players go ahead and let you know, know where you can find them and where they create content at. Sphinx, why don't you lead us off? Oh, okay. It's me. Um, hi, I'm Sphinx Akasha. Uh, you can find me uh, mostly on TikTok. 
uh, making D and D related content, cosplay content, musical content, and occasional uh, other stuff. Um, on Twitch, you can find me on Mondays and or not Mondays on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, right here with Dinner in the Game, playing Emerald Sanctums, which is what we're playing right now or what we're finishing tonight, and uh, Kingdoms of Mist, which is our D and D five E Treasure Planet uh, themed game. Uh, on every other Friday, you can find me with the Alex Bomb channel playing Initiatives and Intrigues. Uh, but on the Fridays, we're not doing that. Like this Friday, uh, you can find me with the ADH Adventures channel running my own game, uh, Ages of the Circle, which is a, a D&D 5e Eberron homebrew uh, game uh, where my players are agents whose uh, agency has been destroyed and they're trying to find out why. We are currently in the middle of our uh, high snapping, uh, where they are breaking into a uh, very, very heavily guarded enclave to steal an item and a person. Uh, so that's fun. Uh, uh, Grim Songbird is a part of that party. So if you get a chance, come and check it out. It's a fantastic time. Um, on Saturdays, uh, I'm also with the ADH Adventures channel uh, and uh, Alternating Saturdays, we switch out between Heroes Arc, uh, which is run by Halfling Wizards, a fantastic game. We just finished up kind of a piratey arc, and now we're, I guess, going into a revolution arc, which is cool. Uh, and then there is Unlicensed Magic War Crimes, which is our darker themed uh, DD uh, homebrew uh, run by Andrew the Teller of Tales. Uh, and that's a whole lot of fun. Hey, Andrew. Um, yeah, it, it's cool, and he he's making us all feel things. Uh, it's it's a it's a whole thing. So yeah, that's where you can find me. Excellent, Milagros. Hello. <laughs> um, so Are you cuddling hardcore right now. Yes. So for the time being, um, you can find me here. Um, on Dinner and a Game on Twitch, Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, and Saturday mornings. Um, until I get settled in New York City, all other content will be kind of on hold and generally sporadic. I'm on TikTok, um, mostly as like a lurker and a commenter of thirsty stuff under my friends' posts. Um, but I have stuff coming. I'm just... You know, one thing at a time, and moving is a pretty big thing. Um, but I will have um, educational content about writing and storytelling um, coming up. Um, I'm completing a bachelor's degree in writing, literature, and publishing, and I'm basically going to be just handing out most of what I learned as pertaining to the writing stuff. Um, because I think that being a good storyteller is a skill and that more people should have the ability to hone that skill. So that's what's coming up. I suck at it. He does not. You do not. You. He rat does not. Bastard. You know what? You know what? You know what? For you're also getting a smack on the head. <laughs> Get him. So I'm losing talking my knees. Shit. I'm getting smacked in the head, huh? Yeah. Talking about <laughs> talking my DM like that. How dare you? How dare you? Jonathan is an old school dagger. He doesn't do the social media things, but he has been around since we started Dinner in a Game. And he is an amazing gentleman who plays in amazing characters. As you can tell from Mark, who is like a fucking cat. Just is he? Yes. I, I feel like I'm really far off the mark still. How far How off so? the mark? Off the oh, off God, the mark. Oh my God! Oh, oh, the oh, 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 Good night, everybody. I'm out of here. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh no, no, no! That was so wrong. Oh. Anyway, that was painful in ways that it should be. M. Hi. Dad jokes. Oh, love it. Love it. I am Star Shard Stories. You can find me on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, usually by that same name. Friday, this week, you can find me on Vampiric Touch ENT for the Coalition of Onyx and Gold, which is an exal exalted game. And Another then, game I want to run. Yes. And then um, we will be recording. It will be posted on YouTube later for Seattle by Night. For the Figment Collective. Seattle? Saturday. Yes, Seattle. Oh. Hey, that's our brand. Yeah. What the fuck? 
And then Saturday mornings, you can find me here DMing, well, MCing Monster Hearts, the Breakfast Club with all of these Chaos Gremlins. They are Chaos Gremlins. And then Sunday, I think Sunday is either Main by Night or Curse of Strahd. So I'm not sure for the Figment Collective on Twitch as of yet. Gotcha. So yeah. those are some of the places you can find me. I'm I'm everywhere. She <laughs> is, in a word, prolific. Um, so Fair. if you want to find uh, uh, any of these crates, I put their link up in the chat so you can find all their content. Our content can be found at our link tree, uh, which I mistyped because I put two L's in link tree. Sorry, it's late. We're tired. We apologize. Um, so you can go to our link tree. You can find all of our social media. We're going to be starting some more pushes on social media. You know what the funny, funniest fucking thing of all was? We were about to start growing our tw our Twitter uh, because, <laughs> because um, what's his name was like, you know, I don't like Facebook. So I was going to say, okay, for you, we'll grow Twitter. And then this happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but if you want to follow us all our social media links are there um we do are doing the contest on tiktok uh so be sure to go follow us there and remember follow us here if you haven't for to be ordered for uh, ugh, enter to win the D, D books and oh as always try and catch every single show you can because we give away a mini at the break uh, um, thank you all so much for being here remember if you're out and about be safe wear a mask it is still bad Everything is still happening, no matter what any politician or anyone else says. You need to be safe, because we want you to come back. Because at dinner and again, we always save you a seat at the table. We want you to be able to join that table week after week. And right now, I think it is time for us to take that table and go give it to somebody else. Okay, so who is live right now? Uh, Art Heart Studios, Perception Studio, ADH Adventures. Geek Girl Lisa, Guslato, Flintlock. Who do you guys want to read? I'll let y'all pick. I picked the cast past couple of times, so. I I think it'd be nice if we rated Geek Girl Lissa because she's joining us. Yeah, for Friday. Every other Friday for Firefly. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So Geek Girl Lissa is currently playing Batman Arkham City, but she is joining our cast for the Every mm -hmm. Other Friday Fire Every Other Friday Firefly game. So we're gonna go yeah. give her a raid. Give her a follow if you can. Remember. With creators like us, small creators like us, every follow is like a gift, and it just shows us that our content is reaching people and they're enjoying it. Uh, Geek Girl List is funny. She usually plays with some friends, and they're pretty much a riot. I watched mm -hmm. them playing the other night. Um, and like I said, she's joining our cast, so please give her a warm welcome to dinner and a game. Uh, let her know that that's where you came from, and let her know that you know you appreciate what she's doing. Uh, and we will see you tomorrow night for Kingdoms of Mist. And we will see you again on Saturday for Monster Hearts. And we love you all very much. Stay safe. Stay sane. Be careful. I don't really know what else to say. I'm running out of the words. Um, remember, emotional trauma is only the better when you share it with a friend. So... Emotional damage. <laughs> Have yeah, a good night, everyone.